What's up, guys? Ian, you look like you just woke up. Yeah. I was just having sex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for you. Eyes right behind me. It's like, <laughs> just good for just you. Did you really? Is that why you're red? Was you pulling your hair? No, I just like, I'm going for like the messy, like, you know. Just had sex look. No, yeah, you're I lying. Thought you, I thought you yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah I do like it. Don't pull, don't, <laughs> don't try and take it back. You were just you know, we're, already, we're already starting off with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm fucking curious. Were you or weren't you? I was. Okay, see? So she was pulling your hair. Oh, well, she wasn't pulling my hair. It's just like, I was, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he was posing while he was doing it. Like a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like American Psycho, you know, where he's like in the mirror. Like, in the mirror. <laughs> Have you ever, we gotta, I, we've covered this before on the show. I'm curious though, because I don't think Mike has answered this question. I'm not sure Ian has either. And Paul, I know you have it. Have, do you guys, have you guys ever watched yourself in a mirror fucking? I try to avoid that. Yeah. <laughs> I have, but I I felt weird doing it. Like one of the houses we had, our closets had like glass, yeah. like mirrored, like yeah. sliding things. Uh, but no, I, I it, it made me feel weird. I didn't want to do it. It didn't did, turn me on in any way. I did it once, and I was like, oh, I don't look good. I, was yeah, like, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I did it the other day. No, you didn't. <laughs> I did. I swear to God, we got uh, on one dresser. We got a big mirror. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got had a, had a good shot of myself. So I was looking at myself, and I was like. You know, I got some abs right now, but my waist is really <laughs> thick. You're, you're, you're midway through, and you're looking at your tricep. Oh, <laughs> well, I was just a straight on view, and I'm like this, so I, I can see like. So you're critiquing your abs while you were fucking. Banging? I, I had a look. I'm not gonna lie. I did have a look. You get thought, so disappointed with yourself, you just stop. You're like, fuck this. I look awful. My <laughs> waist. <laughs> yeah, my, I was like, my waist didn't look that thick five, ten years ago. Yeah. One of the best pumps, though, like the post sex, like when you've been like kind of holding yourself up and you're pumped up. Like when oh, I yeah. get, like I look in the mirror after I've had sex, I'm like, fuck. This is like I gotta take pictures right now. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I send my update pictures to Matt, like immediately. <laughs> He's like, why do you look out of breath in every picture you? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I don't want to be inappropriate but how the fuck what happened is how's the midday it just happened midday it's 7 30 yeah uh, it's like in the middle of the fucking day what are you 18 uh, <laughs> gotta wait till at least i don't know we, watched, we were watching that show hijacked you know and you're like oh i'm horn i'm turned on now <laughs> no no like no. a good interest album movie to get yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> so we watched the episode and then we were done and it, i was like well we got 20 minutes so i got a podcast you know like, <laughs> 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 um speaking of hijack that's a fucking really good show yeah, yeah. the new episode just came out i didn't I, did, I didn't think i would like it because i'm like i don't usually don't like movies or shows that are centered around like one location yeah it's good but it's actually pretty good. I've, I've watched all the episodes. I'm fucking now. I got to wait every fucking week. Are you caught up? Like you watched last yeah, night? Yeah, yeah. I watched all of them. Yeah, I got to wait for the next week now. Because Mike said it was pretty good, so I'm like, okay, I'll give it a chance. Even though Barbarian sucked horribly, I'll give. Well, they yeah. never said Barbarian was good. Yeah, I never just said, said Barbarian was good. I didn't, true, I didn't, didn't. Think it the same way you took it. I didn't expect it to be good. I yeah, expected me either. it to be either. Fucked up, which it yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Anyway, hijacked is really good. And is it? I don't yeah. know if you I don't know if you're still watching Platonic Mike but that's over now. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Mike Ian, okay. Ian, did you start watching that? I haven't no. You guys got to watch. I think you and Melissa would like it. Yeah. Have you watched Platonic babe? What'd she say? No. She said no, but one of her girlfriends told her to watch it. Yeah, it's good. Uh okay, what's going on? Well, you threw us all off track. I'm all fl- flustered now. I don't know yeah. where, I'm, where I'm going. <laughs> uh how are you guys doing? Good? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paul was here first today. He's got his old computer. He started warming up his computer two hours ago. I plugged right. it in around. I plugged it in around four o'clock today. <laughs> I went to the gym. Nice and warm. It's nice I got like hum, humming when you get home. <laughs> She's a little too hot right now. I gotta tell you. Uh, I gotta tell you. Me and Paul were laughing earlier because it's funny. Every time Paul does something on the show, and we're like, that doesn't work that way. In the comment section, inevitably, everyone's like, "No, Paul's right." I, know. I saw that. Everyone's like, "No, he's right. You have to warm them up." You know? Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> like I've never heard of a computer warming up in my life. And there's like, there's like IT guys in the comment section go, "No, yeah. Paul's right." Paul's yeah. right. <laughs> You've never, you never had a Dell, Fuad. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I have to tell you, I'm starting to believe that you're always a little bit right. I yeah. am. There's always, always a little bit. Right. You're right. Yeah. There's always like some truthness to what he says. Yeah. See, this is the problem. What I have is my memory isn't, you know, perfect. Oh, so you, smoke a lot, you smoke a lot of weed. 
So. A little bit, yeah. So I'll uh, <laughs> so I'll read something somewhere and I'll remember something from it, but not the whole thing. Yeah. So that's I think that's where it comes from. <laughs> yeah, but it's also like sometimes you jumble the facts. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Because no. I'll just I'll just it's just, tell it's just good that you're not like a bomb tech because you would just forget the certain. <laughs> <laughs> It was the red wire. No, it was the red. I think I cut the white wire. <laughs> no, it, it's not the same thing because you don't just forget the facts. Sometimes when you remember them, you remember them like backwards or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like the like busting. That's, that's weed brain though, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like busting, yeah. but busting a load from each nut. Like there was like a, there was like a hint of truth to it, but not really. It was, <laughs> but wait, there's I, something I there. Missed, I missed this one. Paul. Paul thinks that when you bust a nut, it goes from one testicle and then the other, like a like a like a shotgun. Like it's like yeah, no, no, like you have like, no, like one, you got two two mainly chambers. from one. Yeah, yeah. mainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so why you're, usually you can uh, you're usually you know, there's two. some truth to this. Yeah, well, there is. There was a little. I don't remember. We we looked it up and there was like five percent truth to it. So a little okay. bit more. I, I, that's arguable. Well, how can you be five percent truth? It's either it's it's true or it's not. Yeah, that's, it, well, there was some truth for sure. is definitely not English, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's arguable. Arguable? That's not a real word? <laughs> I don't think so. Ar- it arguable. sounds odd. Arguable is a word, no? Arguable is a word. So. Arguable is a word. I thought the debatable would be a word. Arguable. Debatable. Yeah, debatable. Well, debatable would be, be more, more properly used. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so when you bust a nut, does it arguable. come? You should probably be more technical if we hadn't say... Uh... Get it. Each <laughs> testicle. Oh, it's not a stupid question at all, and the answer will probably surprise your friends and family. Neither of the testicles are involved in ejaculation, so you're totally wrong, Paul. But there's some type of a storage. A that structure takes place. called the epididymis found above the testicles in the scrotum is the one you have to thank for letting your sperm out during ejaculation. Okay, but now scroll down to it. <laughs> there, was next, <laughs> there was a next question there <laughs> okay see which testicle does the sperm come from the testes are where sperm are manufactured in the scrotum the epididymis is a torture torture torturously. torturously coiled structure topping the testes and it receives immature sperm from the testes and stores it for several days when ejaculation see. occurs sperm is forcefully expelled from the t- it's not what do you mean c they're saying the sperm, is, the sperm <laughs> it's saying the sperm is created in the testicles and stored in the epididymis. Yeah, which is in the testicles. No, it's not. It's outside oh, it's the testicles. The scrotum. It's in the scrotum. It's in the scrotum. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. You just keep saying we're yeah, mixing like, words here. <laughs> no, we're, <not>. <laughs> <laughs> we're splitting hairs here, guys. <laughs> you just keep saying yeah, like you're right. You're not <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, Fuad. A little bit. No, no. This time. <laughs> Ian's right. It's either you're right or you're no, right. I, th- I think he's. I think he's like five percent right. You know? Yeah. See. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's a little truth to it. There's always a little truth to it. No, yeah. that one. That one's not. That one's not. Oh. It's, it's clearly says that the sperm is created in the testicles. And so stored. at one point it is in the testicles, though. Yeah, but it's not yeah. shot. But it's not. No, no. But it's not shot from there. And that was his well, argument. We don't know how long it stays there for. We don't. Yeah, know we do. It just said. It just said stores for several days. Several so days. So what if you in, in the epididymis? So Wait, if you. So That's if right. you have sex in those several days and blow your load, it's coming from the balls, right? No, it's coming from the epididymis. But it's stored in the balls for a few days first. It's not stored in the balls. No. It's stored in the yeah, epididymis. So guys, that's the manufacturing facility, the distribution. Yes, and then it goes the... to the warehouse. Back uh, yeah. to your gun yeah. analogy, it could be like one's in the magazine and then it goes into the chamber and then it goes out. So it still kind of works on the gun analogy. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> so when it's cocked. Yeah, you got I, like, I, I like Mike's analogy better. Is a manufacturing plant is the test. That makes sense. That makes and sense. It's, to it's me. shipped to the warehouse, whereas and the epididymis, and it's distributed to the girl. Yeah. <laughs> She's the <a> receiver. <laughs> On her back. <laughs> wherever, wherever you may. Location could be anywhere. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, Paul blessed us with that one a while back. And then he even argued, he's like, well, no one can blow more than two loads. And I'm like, for sure you can. Well, you can't. But, I mean, they're after several pretty, They're starting to get pretty. I would say your volume gets pretty low after a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you right. still like but you still, but you still can. Yeah, but I mean, it depends on yeah. which time has elapsed too. How many do you think it would take? Maybe Google this. How many can you do back to back before there's nothing? I think that depends on the person. No. Yeah, I would imagine it does. Yeah, but there's probably a range. Like it'll say six to eight. Yeah, you know? there's an average. Like how many loads can you Paul, blow? Paul, cut guess first before we do this. Oh, how many loads? I'm gonna yeah. say five. Really? No, I don't think Four. so. Four. 
I don't yeah. think so. Well, it depends you know, on your age, probably I've, too. I've done four. Yeah. In, um, like well, in, how close like in what time frame? Me? Wait, yeah. no, cool. We're not talking a day. I'm talking like you I come, finish, write again, finish, write again, finish. You thought so, four? Well, I was 18 once. Oh yeah. yeah um, you had a lot of time on your hands that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did literally, have a job, obviously. Literally had a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say three. Being the average. No, there's no way, uh, Ian. I think it's four or five. Mike. I say three or four. I'm gonna I'm gonna play the prices right. I'll go six. Yeah, I think it's six. gonna be higher than we think, but. So well, what are you got... guys considering a load, though? When you ejaculate. When there's <laughs> yeah, something... I mean, like, like how much <laughs> does there need to be? Like a little no, bit. No, big, no, it's, little not tiny... a, it's not an amount. It's when you come, when you have an yeah. orgasm. Oh, oh, I, oh, I thought until you meant like an actual until load. Until it turns into baby throw up. <laughs> yeah, until, no, until there's nothing. Burping. Until you're just having an orgasm with zero production. Nothing comes out, yeah. Huh. There must be a point. With... Because, like, eventually you're going to outrace. You're going to, like, you know... Get it's ahead of your epididymis yeah. and your testicles. Your manufacturing plant won't be able to produce it enough. Right. <laughs> yeah, it can't keep up. Uh, how many? Fly in demand. How many oh. nut Cheerios? No, no. How many nut Cheerios? What? What? <laughs> Why does it keep? Why does it keep doing that? I don't know. What oh man. Whoa. That's Some weird stuff happened with your uh, with your stuff today, Fuad. How many loads can a man shoot in a row? I don't think that's <laughs> in Ontario. <laughs> what kind of loads? Oh wow! It's the first thing that's fucked up. Uh, yeah, the go. second one. Go to the second one. Uh, yeah, the second oh, one. Yeah. Uh, I'm 14. What does the inside <laughs> of the vagina feel like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go continue reading. What's no, no, this there? is just this is just people. I want to. This is the National Institute of Health. Let's well, there, Ben's there. Natural Health. Here. Uh, aim. The study was three to four. The effect of three to four. Oh, no, 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 no. Days of sexual abstinence. Days of abstinence. Yeah. Don't jump ahead, Mike. Oh, there it is. Three or four. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Resu- results, results. Uh, criteria at the first evaluation after three to four days of abstinence. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is like really scientific. Okay, yeah, but it's it after the third, second and third evaluations of two-hour abstinence, the semen pr- parameters were still in accordance with the minimum criteria, except progressively motility, whereas, okay, so we're getting two, three... Same no, this is after two hour of abstinence. We're not talking about yeah, that. Yeah. No, I know. We're talking it's about like back to back. Go down. Uh, Go down. Times 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 yeah. Ben's natural health. Ejaculation of his felt through the body. There's a good question. What? It said, how long does it take sperm to, uh, right there? How long does it take for sperm to refill? Yeah. Where? Let's get the answer to this one first. Finish. Yeah. Okay. Do men need to ejaculate twenty one times in a month? What? One second. Let me let me just do this here. How many times can a man orgasm? No, not just orgasm because we're not talking about orgasm. We're talking about ejaculate. Ejaculate. Ejaculate before dying. dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that. ejaculate in a row. Person who has a penis may be able to come anywhere from one to five times in a single second. Oh. We're all we're all right. Oh. So right eight. in the middle. Three. Right in the middle. No, not three. Everyone's it's right except for Fuat. Except for me. Yeah. <laughs> Six, yeah. <laughs> uh some people can you know what I really hate about this sentence? A person who has a penis. Yeah. yeah. They, they have to go. I wonder, I wonder who that could be. You could have, uh, have, have a lady penis, you know? Some it wouldn't have said that five years ago. Ejaculate more often than others generally the younger you are the more you're able to ejaculate after you ejaculate at a period of time okay okay i think we've covered this long enough we're good yeah so between one and five that's good so i was the only one who was wrong yeah here's but i've done six <laughs> <laughs> so fuck them um <laughs> what's going on guys this episode is brought to you by merrick health and if you go to merrickhealth.com forward slash rbp it'll take you to my page at merrick health and help you optimize hormones and make sure your blood markers are in check so that your body is constantly recovering and getting better throughout your bodybuilding career. Without your hormones being optimized and with your without your health being in check, you are not going to be able to progress at the rate you want to progress. So I'm going to take you guys to the website so you can see what I'm talking about. This is MerrickHealth.com forward slash RBP. This is my page. If you use code RBP, you're going to get some savings at on either one of these panels. Now, the $120 panel is just the lab work. They're going to send it to you. You're going to have to decipher it yourself or have somebody you know decipher it. 
The better option, in my opinion, even though it's more expensive, is this lab panel here because it's not just a checkup. You get a 25-minute lab review call with one of their professionals. Guys, I cannot tell you how important it is to have one of their professionals go through your blood work with you. Having a professional lab analyst look at your blood work is more important than just having a family doctor look at it who doesn't really know what they're looking at or what the different blood markers they've had checked off, what they're supposed to be, and how they relate to what we're trying to do in bodybuilding. Guys, please go to AmericHealth.com forward slash RBP. Use my code RBP. Get everything checked out and make sure that everything is running at an optimal level so you can keep growing and getting better in your bodybuilding careers. Okay, uh, Ian, you're how many weeks in now? You're still not really dieting, dieting, are you? No, like I'm eating all my meals every day, but like like my prepped meals, but it's not like I'm not pushing down yet for sure. Are you no. still coming here tomorrow? Yeah. What time are you coming here? I'm probably going to leave here like 10, 11. Okay. Uh, I'll are be we... there like 6, 7. Is tomorrow a day off? Yeah. Okay. I planned well, it so that tomorrow I wouldn't have to train. Yeah. And then Friday, Saturday, we're going to train? Yeah. Saturday, what time are we going to train, Paul? Because we have the morning and the night show. Are we have time in between to go train? You guys do it, you know, whatever you got to do. Well, I got to be at the show. I'm just saying, like, is there how much time is between the morning and night show? Uh, not much. It's a 10 a.m. prejudge and a 2 p.m. final. So it, I, I, I thought it'd be better just to get it all done. Yeah. It's a 10, 10 a, wait, it's a 10 a.m. morning and a 2 p.m. Yeah. finals? Yeah. So but if you guys want to go train, like, you don't have to be at prejudge rate when it starts. Well, the other thing, too, is we could always leave um, just before the end of prejudge. Yep. And be done before finals. Yeah. I mean, if anything, I can just open the door for these who, these guys if they want to train. And I don't, yeah. you know what I mean? Mike, yeah, are you are training? You, are you going down Friday or Thursday, Mike? Friday. 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 Okay. Yeah, after Friday. His cat's got to work. So he's coming. Out. So are yeah. you coming? So we're out? Train. I'll, I'll be there like seven, six, 7 p.m. tomorrow. It's, yeah. it's like a six and a half hour drive. So yeah. Are you, Mike, are you coming? Does she have to finish work first or are you leaving in the morning on Friday? No, we're leaving in the morning. Oh, okay. So you'll be here like one or yeah. two or something. Okay. So we're going to yeah. work out Friday? Yeah, Friday I'd like to work out before registration. Okay, what are we training? I don't know. What are we training? Whatever we want. Yeah, I know. All, well, all of it. Everything. <laughs> it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be back day. For I'm, uh, I have like us. a, a ch secondary chest and back both together day tomorrow, so I can do some back. I would do chest and back. I don't care. Yeah, I, I can do that. The shitty thing is I can't have a, a good leg day because I tore my fucking hamstring. Even though well, I, I just train legs. I train legs today, so I'm good for legs. So what's Saturday for you then? Because I was shoulders, like, it's or? either I train legs today or I train early in the morning and then sit in a car for seven hours with legs I just trained. So I was like, fuck that shit. I'm getting this out of the way. Yeah, Dude, yeah I yeah. don't want to train legs with you guys. So yeah, I have, <laughs> I, have like, I have like chest and tries, back and buys, then off. And then I have legs and then I have chest and back the secondary day. And then I have shoulders and arms. That's a weird split. It's an Ian split. Yeah. All right, have, you been doing the, have you been doing the higher volume stuff or no? I've been doing a little more. Actually, uh, Joe Bennett, hypertrophy coach, made this split for me that I'm doing now. Okay. Are yeah. you enjoy enjoying your training again? Yeah. 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 What's how, Oh, you know what? Somebody asked me a really good question because we always talk about stuff and we don't really define it all the time. What would you guys, because I don't know if my definition of high volume is the same, same as other people. So, Mike, maybe you can touch on this too. Well, what, what would is, you consider high volume? Yeah, what do you? Okay. So, this is the thing. When I think of like Jay Cutler or Hot like 20, 30 cents. or Hottie or Seth Ferrosi or Milos or Milos, when they say high volume, they're talking about the total number of sets. Yeah. When including I feeders? Say, I don't know if they're including feeders. Because like Roman, when Roman says he's doing 20 sets, he's talking about all working sets. Really? 20 working sets, yeah. 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 And are those uh, all to failure or like rate I think, I think before Roman, failure? I think Romans are. Yeah. 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 Roman's a little crazy though. Yeah. But um, I think my definition of high volume is a little different though, because I don't do... Like I'll only do two working sets per exercise, but all of my feeders are a higher volume rep range. Yeah. So I'm not necessarily doing high volume in the amount of sets, but I'm doing higher volume in the amount of reps per set. Yeah. Your, to your total workload is still higher, even though the, all the sets aren't to failure. Right. Yeah. So Mike, what would you, what would you, if you were describing high volume versus low volume, are you describing it in terms of sets or reps or both or what? All of it. Yeah. Yeah, all of it. But I mean, I don't. You guys use like feeder sets and all these different things. I don't. I want to train you so you see it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to working on. Mike. Wait a minute, Mike. Mike, here. Okay, here. Let's let's go back. Let's go back. 
So I just don't, I don't view, I don't view like, obviously like a, you call things a top set. I get it. Like know what that means, but it's like, it's like the way I view a workout. And I've said this before is like, I'm, I'm inflating a ball. Yeah. So like say I'm pumping air in a ball. I'm not, I don't, I don't care what happened when I started pumping the air. I don't care what happens when I'm done, when I'm almost done pumping the air. I just want the volume to expand throughout the workout yeah. and then reach yeah. a mass, critical mass and be done. So yeah. whatever might happen in that range, there's no defined thing where it's like, I know I'm going to do four sets of this and two sets of that. And okay. So I have it's that. Not gonna, I have yeah. that philosophy too, but just. That's honestly how I've been kind of training right now. Like I'm yeah. just doing whatever sets I feel I'm getting the most of in the exercise. Like, if I start on chest day and I start with a fly, I might do like four sets and then I might move yeah. to a press and do one set. And yeah. then I might go to another exercise and do two or three. And then I might do another like set and do one, you know? Okay. But mm. just for, just for people watching. So when you say you're inflating a ball, I think we all kind of have that feeling, but what would, so let's say you start doing chest and you start doing like a machine press. No, I would, the thing is I wouldn't, I'm not going to start with, it's going to depend on like what, like if I was going to be training Ian or I was going to be training Paul or I was going to be training you, I'd want to see like how you move first. So I'd like sit you on a machine and be like, whatever I want to start with just for the fuck of it. Like I want to show me how you move. Like, okay. I want to see you move. And then okay. based off what I see from that, I'll, I'll make a blueprint in my head of what we need to do. Like maybe you're like shoulder dominant. We need to like get the thing to roll back. We need to open up your rib cage. So we're going to do exercises that, create this opening feeling and then we can get on to like really rocking hard right or back could be the same thing right okay so sorry i'm just I'm, I'm trying to really narrow this down mm -hmm. so let's ignore the type of exercise let's say mm -hmm. you found the exercise that you want to start with mm -hmm. when you're working through the sets so let's say you're doing four sets five sets right mm -hmm. are they all to failure or are they like the sets of 10 so they're to they form failure Okay, so they're all in the just, sense that like yeah. maybe the first two of like something we're doing, like I'm just going to push, push. I'll see when things are starting to get kind of shaky, and it's like okay, well, let's pull back. Plus, I I superset a lot of stuff, right? So it's like I know I'm going to get to a certain point with the first movement, and then the other movement's going to complement that movement and be the thing that adds to like the failure of the set, which is like the movement is starting to suck so or the the depth isn't happening, right? So. So you don't have any sets. Like, for example, when I was working with John and when me and Paul have been pretty much doing this our entire time training together, if we're, if we sit down to do like a incline press, we'll pick a number, say 10 or 12, and we'll do one plate, two plate, three plate, four plate. And, and, you know, by the time you get to four, that's failure for 10. Yeah. So, I don't. so you don't have those warm up like feeder, anything. Yeah, I do, but I do, but in the sense that like, things are going to start out lighter and get progressively heavier as we go Yeah, in whatever it is that I'm doing, but I'm not, it's not my goal to like see how heavy I can get it. Cause like say for we're doing dumbbell presses, for example. Yeah. I'm sure all of us could warm up with sixties or whatever, like something that's moderate that we can move well and like really connect with. So then we'll go up and I'll see how that, if that connection is still happening and that depth is still happening and that control out of like, the bottom is still happening. But if we start getting to like, Oh, you, did that well let's move to 90s now or whatever right we see, start seeing like this whole thing of like i'm creeping forward and dominating again i'm not letting myself push properly then it's like i'll pull back or i'll get them to be like i'll stay at that weight and i'll do a number of sets there but i think what i'm trying to get to and i don't want to belabor the point but there has to be mm -hmm. a set at the beginning somewhere where you're yeah. feeling it out yeah that's by that for me is the set where it's just like I'm I have a blueprint of what I want to do and this is the movement I want to start with because I know it's gonna elicit this type of contraction and this type of workout as we go along. Okay. So I don't like I know I can't answer it in the sense like I always start with dumbbells and I would do one through this one. I can't like yeah. yeah. You guys will yeah. see if you train. Like it will it's like I'm it's a different thing that I'm doing. I'm not really right. into like where like you guys describing that like one plate, two plate, three plate, four plate thing. I yeah. I'm so far from that. I okay. just don't do okay. that. Well, it's something I think, I think, have you done videos about it? Like kind of describing how you prepare? Yeah. You have? Okay. Cause I mean, I do a lot of, I do a lot of breakdown videos. Like I talked about how I would, how I approach back training, how I want to, depending on what the guy's issue is, if he's like very pinched or like very like round pulled back, my idea would be to get him to open more and let yeah. this back, like almost feel like it's like hanging now, but now yeah. we can get deeper into like, we can get deeper into like the mid back. We can get into the lats because they're not pinched down anymore. They're actually open and they can move outside the body. A little off. So I would, 
a, a mm. little off topic because you said that sometimes when I'm training back, I like to do certain movements where I focus on the front half of the movement. And then I like to do other movements, <clears throat> excuse me, where I'll focus on the back half of the movement, like the contraction yeah. versus the stretch. Do you guys yeah. do something similar to that? Or do you think every, every exercise lends itself to the full range? I think once you understand the full, the full length of tension or the full, full range of motion on any movement, especially guys like you guys, you're talented enough to know like where I can let tension out to and pull back as opposed to like this all the time, I can kind of wave out and get that tension back again. I don't need to always, so then I can start working different ranges and I can stay on the same pull, but I'm hitting different areas because I'm shortening the pull or I'm putting more weight behind me or I'm lifting my chin up a little higher to allow my shoulder to roll more and my chest to lift more. Mm. Just random stuff like that, where it's like, you have to see the person doing it. That's why it's very hard for me when I talk to people about training, like you come up with a training program. It's like, it'd be damn near impossible for me to do that. Cause, well, because you're, uh, it sounds like your training is not replicatable on a piece of paper. You have to actually see the people. Like I'd, I'd have to have faith in your movement before I could ever tell you like, like food. I know, I know how you train. I know how we've trained. We worked on stuff. I can tell you like, yeah. go remember we did that super set or we did yeah, that yeah, combo yeah. Yeah. where like, you know, you opened up and then we did this and you felt your back. Like then I can say that, but like most people like, they're like, so did you barbell rows? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Are you any good so at what you're, like, so, what, so what you're saying is if you're going to write a program for somebody, you have to at least work with them once to see how their movement pattern is. It would be a good idea. Not that you yeah. need to like, maybe if you're like doing stuff over the internet, at least I at least tell someone like, send me snippets of your workout. I want to see your movement on, yeah. on all the lifts I ask you to do. I want to see just one set. Yeah. So yeah. I can be in my mind like, okay, when he does the seated row. I want him to sit up taller. I want him to put his ass back. I want him to have more weight on the chest pad. I want to drive. He's leaning back too far to start. He's pulling to him as opposed to through him. Yeah. Yeah. So I can yeah. see that stuff on video and I can see when it moves, but like to tell you just randomly, like this is the program for back. You got to do this. It's like, you could be doing the most random shit and like the most stuff that you would never think is going to help grow your back, but it's so focused on what you need to work it on. That it's like your back's ballooning, right? So I'm going down a little bit of a rabbit hole. We'll go back to the high volume stuff, I promise. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Is there, is there some hard and fast rules though? Because I've done back videos where I've been like, these are some tips or these are some things you should be doing yeah. for back. So, and I'm not, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I don't really, like, I, I don't care. I don't mind being wrong. But do you think- No, no though, one's wrong. Do you think there's like, if you were going to do a video about training back, would there be some hard and fast rules that everybody could use? The movement, the movement throughout would be the same. So my movement across all movements in terms of like lifting sternum, throwing shoulders, like head yeah. pressing back all the time, yeah. whatever it might be, unless I'm literally trying to hang my head and like pull for super retraction. Yeah. But there's hard, fast rules for chest, like lift ups, like pull into lats, drive off lats. There's the movement principles to carry out through the whole body part. It's just the exercise has changed. We have to learn how to input that movement into that exercise so that it's more effective, right? So a low row movement is going to be a lot, is going to be a little different than a row that's straight on off a machine, yeah. let's say. So Mike, we have to, yeah. Sorry. I think I've asked you this before, but did you go to school for this or is this no. all self-taught? This is all self-taught. So is, for, is this- And is through your... people, really smart people I know that try, taught no, me. I, or... <laughs> no, and I know some of the, I know some of the people you've worked with and- and learn from but i guess what i'm trying to get to is has have you honed your system through working with so many people that you've kind of learned more tricks or how to perfect each person yeah, and that's yeah that's a thing I, I preach this to a lot of people is like if you're a trainer and you don't actually train anyone then you're you're getting worse as a trainer every day because you're not everyone's different. Like if I went to the gym with Ian right now and I did back with Ian and then Paul had a session with me right after, they wouldn't be doing the same thing. They might do the same thing, but they're not doing the same thing because so each of them has, each of them has their own issues, right? Of like Ian might, he might be too dominant with the pull. He might be too concerned about or Paul is this or that. Like you guys would all have different things that I would see where I'm like, Oh, we could really make this better. If you just do this, it could be as simple as like your head, you're putting your head down too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your yeah. chin up more. Can I literally, can I ask you what you meant by that? If you're a trainer and you're not training anybody, you're not getting because back you're back. not. If you're not dealing with people and you're like, not to say that you need to like be some average Joe training a thousand people a day, but Absolutely. if you're not seeing different people move yeah. and understanding their inefficiencies, and then under and maybe even seeing how like wow that person moves naturally really well, 
and no wonder they have great arms or no wonder they have a great chest but like because they can move even better right so if you're not constantly trying to figure out this puzzle of how to unlock people's physiques and make them move better or or elicit better contractions or feel stuff, you're missing out because all you have is your perspective at that point. So if I just went off what I feel all the time, I can transfer that over to people, but then I can see other people. I'm like, oh, he didn't really, when I said that to this guy, he got it. But then I explained it in another way because I was really looking at it and I realized it was because his hip was, he had no weight in his hips. And he's trying to do a pull off, rock off a chest pad with all his weight forward and none of it's in his hips. So he can't fall back over. So it's like, that's what I'm saying. You need to like practice what you preach and like be figuring out these equations all the time. So when you get with someone who's super talented, like you guys, it's just like that. Like I trained a guy today. Sorry. sorry, I trained a guy today who's literally like traps are up in his ears. That's Paul. No, he, I'm not kidding. Like he's this far forward. And his traps are up in his ears. So even if he does a lateral raise, he can't even hold the dumbbell in his hand. No, no offense to you. He knows he is. I love you. You're a great guy. But I'm just telling like <laughs> he's trying to like he literally uses his weight here all the time that when he threw it, he threw a lateral raise, his hands went dead. Like they oh, literally okay. flapped at the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah flapped yeah. at the top. Because he's literally holding weight here on, on his, his trap. Yeah. Yeah. So if I never if I if I had him do laterals the way I do laterals, he's just rocking on his neck. And he's doing nothing. So I had to get him to come up and I had to get him to roll and throw his traps behind him. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, literally yeah, throw yeah. it to the side of him, which I would never tell anyone to do. Yeah. But yeah. if I gave him a program and I said, do laterals the way I do laterals, he'd be fucking flapping in the wind for hours. Traps would get huge and you'd have no delta. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, that's what I mean. You need to be able to, so that's to not, see how people are moving. Individuality. I, I apologize to Paul. That's not Paul. No, Paul it's a, no, no it's, it's a bad habit of mine. No, I, no, I, no I but, that's, but that's not the same thing. What you do is more like, I think you brace yourself. Yeah, I think I'm guarded. Yeah. I think I'm guarding myself sort of. Whenever, you know? whenever you, there's a lot of movements where you'll shrug your shoulders. Yep. And yeah. I don't even realize it until you tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, the thing. And you need to cue. That's why it's very important that people need to cue someone all the time because it's hard to break those habits. Yeah, yeah. and they become and worse I, if you train alone. I made the comparison of like, someone would be like, oh, you need a trainer. Like, I did a video like, like. Oh, I just want to come. People are training. I just want to come and just like pick up some basic stuff. I think I'm pretty good, and I'm going to grab it. I'm just going to run with it. It's like you're telling me that I'm going to break a decade of bad habits in an hour. Yeah, that's as yeah. ignorant as me going to the golf course. Like you yeah. see pro golfers, like whoever you can think of, like top golfers, whatever. Right? They're working on their swing every fucking day of their life. Yeah, yeah. their yeah. swing can never be too efficient. Their swing yeah. can never be good enough. Yeah. And you're telling me that you that something is that it's that complex just swinging a club. That's one thing you're doing with your movement. That's this one movement of the body. There are a million. And you come to the yeah. gym and there's all these dynamic movements for all different parts of the body, and you're just gonna pick them up like that. Like yeah. God bless you if you do. So, yeah. So let me ask you this then. Let's say you work with someone. Let's just I'll just use me for example. Mm. So lately, I don't know if it's because I'm older or what the fuck it is, but lately in the last couple of years, I've noticed. I can connect really well with almost any muscle I'm working with. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what muscle I'm training, I can like within two or three sets, I can, I'm like, I got a really good pump. Like, I just feel like I have a really good connection for some reason. Yeah. You probably do not okay. for some reason. <laughs> okay, But so a curious, just out of curiosity, if you were going to coach somebody who came in like me or like, you know, Quint or Ian or Paul or anybody like the guys that are at that gym that are, you know, professionals, and they can, and they had that connection. But why, the, why... the thing that might be the difference between you and them is they, you may have a connection to feel what you feel. Okay. So in the sense that like, I do it this way and I feel it. And this is what I'm, this is what I associate with feeling things. Right. Yeah. But it could be a completely different thing. Like a lot of guys say they get a back bump, but then they train with me and they can't, they can barely, they can barely stand up in their back seizing uh, okay. because their erectors are fucking firing for the first time ever. So you're saying like, that just because someone's feeling something, it doesn't mean they're feeling it to their maximum ability. Yeah, and there's and if and if someone's strong in a in a movement, that doesn't yeah. mean that they're not weak too. Because they're no, no, I'm not. I'm not equating. No, but I'm they've a, they've, yeah. they've gotten into that groove of being like, I can really dominate this movement. Yeah, but not, the the next step you have to take to understand how to develop further is to like get weak again, and yeah, then yeah. get strong again to like, relearn. I it. need to yeah, like well, yeah, relearn it. Just add a wrinkle to it that maybe okay. makes it better, right? Well, I don't think he means relearning it. I think me. I think he mean or, 
I think he means you're working fibers that you've never really worked because you had a pattern. Just, yeah, change yeah. I see. Yeah, to make yeah. it harder yeah. again to then work up in it again. Yeah, Go yeah. Ahead. So you got to start to build those connections over. Like right it's there. like an, our sport is based around like everyone's obsessed with failure, but they want to be as strong as possible. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, but that goes against failure. Like you just want to get you want to fail in your set. I want to fail in my movement because I'm inefficient. And I'm not strong enough to do certain things, and I want to get stronger. But Mike, at those you, things. But you have to admit, like weight does matter. Oh, like of course. I, that's like what I'm, but I'm, all I'm saying is that when this this is my whole thing is like I've never said that weight doesn't matter. It's yeah. relative to your ability to move it. Mm. So just because you can get yourself in a dominant position and move a shit ton of weight doesn't mean that you shouldn't get in a weaker position. And yeah, the weight might go down, but the stimulus goes way up. Yeah, 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 and then well, your ability to move that properly, your the weight flies back up again because you become more like, efficient at moving. Yeah, you okay. talked about before, like a prime example is like like guys doing like bent over barbell rows. You know, and they're doing it. They're fucking like standing straight up, basically like barely using any fucking back or lats at all. You know, if you pitch them over to ninety or change the movement where you're more isolated on the lat or the you know rhomboids or whatever, you can make that movement. So a guy that's doing four plate, pitch him over yeah. fucking more and see if he can lift that weight. There's no fucking yeah. chance he can. You know, yeah. it should always be like your goal as a as a bodybuilder. And you develop your physique to, to get like yeah make things as difficult as possible for yourself not like straining yourself like oh my god it's so hard like getting yourself to move in new ways and like little tweaks and like hit different fibers in different areas of your back or your chest that you've never most guys when you talk to them who don't have a chest and they come to you like i would never I would never work my chest they'll do a session with me and i'll open them the way i want them to open or teach them like the shoulder the shoulder like retraction and the throw and this body movement backwards. And they're like, oh, I've never felt my chest here. But like, I incline press all the time. Like, yeah, well, you're fucking using your shoulder, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. what incline press is. I hate to break it to everybody. There's yeah. very little chest in that. Like, if you're, unless you're a very talented individual, right? So, and even then, the incline can't be like this. It's probably more like that. Yeah, it's a low it's incline. Creating, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I just, when you were talking, I just realized why I'm connecting so much more with my muscle. Mm. Me, and, me and Paul, since, you know, we're a little bit older and we're not, on a ton of gear and i'm not as strong as i was what'd you say you fucker lighten the loads oh i thought you, oh. I thought you said i thought you said a little older i thought you're <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no um so your focus is less on weight and more on just contraction and well, yeah. because yeah. Me, because me and paul can't lift as heavy and paul you've probably noticed this oh, yeah. we do we do not necessarily a ton of different movements but we do them a, a different way all the time yeah. so i feel like we're hitting a bicep curl like today we did bicep curls sometimes we do the preacher with a wide grip and today we did the preacher with a narrow grip yep and sometimes we'll do just there's a host but, of there's a host of did, I, lift, I lift up in a lot of the movements a fraction of the weight i lifted when i was 20 21 22 yeah, yeah. because my form and like my ability to utilize the muscle i'm intending to is just so much better like yeah, yeah like could i you know fucking barbell bench six plates but like i had literally zero chest I had gigantic fucking triceps and delts and no, literally no chest, but I could bench mm -hmm. press a million pounds or bent over rows. I was out there, bent, you know, doing four, five, six fucking, you know, but like I had no back, like, you know, so but it's like, I also, you know, got and, and, and it's, and it's not like my form looked bad in the movements. They still looked good, but like what I was using wasn't being isolated in the way, like Mike's saying, like I wasn't making the movement as difficult as possible to really work what I wanted to work. It's also, it was said, change, sorry, change, changing people's like points of tension and where they're starting movements from and like where they're basing their power. A lot of the times that's where people are fucked up, right? So like you, we all know if you do a barbell row, I'm emanating power up through the floor. I'm not just yeah. swinging a bar up and down yeah, in midair and like hoping and like tiptoeing them. Like I know how to emanate power up through something, right? Yeah. But people forget that when they go to machines and they don't like understand that you're pulling through things or I'm driving back from things all the time. I'm not just like, I'm not just doing the pressing of something like going, ah, yeah. Ah. I think I mean, where, so I think where I kind of disagree with a lot of people, maybe or maybe I don't, I don't know, but I feel like that beginning phase is still important, even though it's not perfect. Like when yeah, we like like when, when I watch like like when I watch Sam train, Sam Sulek. Like me and Ian were talking the other day because Ian watched some of his videos and we were laughing because it reminded us of us. Yeah. yeah. So, it reminds so, me of me too. It's the same yeah, shit I used to do. We all it's not like I, I never did stuff like my training and how i train and how i train people now has been an evolution of like being a fucking retard all, all the way up to like but i mean like i'm a fucking caveman oh, but that's what i'm saying like i feel yeah. like i feel like the element of caveman is kind of important 
at those in those early in those early years well, especially when you're like you're you're his age or you're, or yeah. you're even a little younger like you're you're fresh man like yeah yeah if you can be guided in that space and like yeah kind of like help hold like stave off injuries that might come as a result of Being stuff a little you've done and building like a good foundation strength i do yeah, think like right. if, if you can like if you can harness that a bit but still have that rawness to it yeah it's like it's going to be a special physique well, you can because, see he looks awesome right but yeah. yeah because after i posted you know that he joined us i started to get a bunch of messages from people like oh you need to work with him you need to get him to work with mike you need to get him to work with ian blah 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 and i'm like and my response is always the same let him do his thing man I, i'm not changing anything i'm no. like will i will i try and like tweak also, a couple yeah, like, things? He'll, have a, like, he'll have a natural growth and progression himself just like we all did we yeah. all look like that and we all don't live like that now and yeah. that's not saying that oh if i could go back to when i was 19 i would have done everything i'm doing now probably not you know like, i'd love to, i'd love to feel those 21 year old joints again and yeah <laughs> Not give, not give a fuck uh-huh. about yeah. like, put four plates on fuck it <laughs> that was the best part about working with him the one day he's like i'm like what are you training he's like back i'm like what are you starting with he's like barbell rows like, motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> i was so jealous i'm like i gotta do pullovers and pull downs <laughs> and like, like <laughs> and then after that, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna think maybe do i really want to do barbell rows? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see this machine row <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so going back before we end the part, this part of the podcast, going back to volume, what is there a number that you guys would put on someone saying I train high volume versus low volume, and if so, what is it? I would think I would just say if they're going to do volume, like define what you think volume is, and then if you're going to be actually a volume trainer, go a little, one or two more sets on everything. Yeah, <laughs> like. Well, because that's like, it, like you're incrementally putting more volume in as opposed to being like, oh, Jay Cutler did 50 sets. And I, you know what I mean? Like, so you may not be ready for that. If you want to put a hard and fast number on it, I would say if you're doing more than 15 sets to failure, that's pretty high volume. Well, I don't, I don't know if I actually want to put a number on it now that I think of it. But you were kind of, you were kind of, yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're right. I guess, <laughs> but no, but it just kind of hit me. I'm like, maybe it's actually dependent on the person. On the it body is. part too, probably, and the body and, part, and the body, and how well how well they respond, right? Like yeah. it can be. I'm sure you guys have a body part that, like, like for me, it's my hamstrings. If I do three sets of lying leg curl, my hamstrings so pumped I can't. I, if I sit yeah. down, I'll yeah. cramp. Yeah. So I'm like, I can't do high volume there. It's fucking yeah. impossible. Like you could do six to eight sets of hamstrings and you're done, but like you could go blast arms and do fucking twenty sets and like you're fine. You know, yeah. So obviously, yeah, on the- do and obviously the the nervous system fatigue from bigger versus smaller muscles is going to be different. You go and try and blast twenty sets of fucking squats and deadlifts and you know shit like that. Obviously, your nervous system is going to take a lot different hit than if you're doing fucking twenty sets of preacher curls and tricep extensions. You know. Yeah. Well, we've, we've been in points and workouts before if we had, where we I'm almost starting to lose a pump and you know, it's okay. We've, we've had enough. Well, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't been there in a long time though. That was it's been bad. a while. It's been when, a while for when sure. We were, when we were younger. Yeah. I had to actually like stop. I'm like, okay, I, this is the, it's cause we would do like five exercises. And I'd be like, I can do another one. Right. But it was more like, it was more like just cause I love training, not because we I needed would find myself getting, getting into that kind of mood when I get close to shows. Mm-hmm. When I'd be like six weeks out, and it's like the the time you absolutely do not want to be doing that. I'd be like, I can do one more exercise. I can yeah. do one more set. Like just one more, just like fucking. Right well, especially this is it, stupid. Why am I doing this? You well, know? especially because when you're like when you're half depleted, you have like the endurance of like a fucking marathon runner. Yeah, you're doing an hour cardio a day. You're a fucking pump full of drugs. Like your mm-hmm. body weight is less. Yeah, you know everything is conducive to your extra. You're working out like capacity being better well i also i also i also noticed and ben touched on this the other day because ben's been eating such a low amount of food when you're depleted when you're not like glycogen loaded you oh, can, yeah you can just train forever and you know yeah not, because like, like, you're not fucking you know pumped to the max like right away yeah. you, you can put, put in depletion and stuff you're kind of just like at a baseline all the time you know paul is this a fucking blunt or a cigar that's a cigar. <laughs> if I get if I get fucking high, <laughs> just falls out of the chair. <laughs> That's brothers broadleaf. That's good what shit. Is the, this is so Paul gave me the, just so you guys. We're not sponsored by these people. Paul gave me these mini cigars because Paul doesn't like big fat cigars that take forever to smoke. Gave yeah. me some. So these, yeah. I will. I got a bunch. So these are called. I got uh, some for you this weekend. Yeah. I need. Okay, Paul. You you work at the border. I need a. I have a logistics question for you. Yeah. Uh, I'm out of those little Zin things and I'm going to Windsor. So I'm like, I got to rip across the border. What's the law on getting nicotine or tobacco products? Oh, you mean as far, how much can you bring back? Can I just drive across, buy some and come right back? You got to pay. I mean, you got to declare it. Yeah. I mean, like you might get sent in. 
Um, it, it's, it, you know, so if, you I might get that, if I just pay, if I just pay some customs on it or something. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's it. But is, yeah. is there a limit? If I'm going to declare it and pay customs, what's the limit? Is there a limit? There's no limit. You just got to pay the duty on it. Well, it's not a commercial, you know. Let's, uh, uh, hey, no, but like if I go across obviously. and say buy, buy 20 tins of Zin, I spend 150 bucks on them. Like that's yep. declared. That's all good. Okay. Yep. Yep. I didn't know if there was like you could only buy so much, but you have to spend 24 hours. Like I didn't know if there was like a time thing and like, you know. That, that's only for, that only applies for exemptions. Okay. So if you're gone two days or more, you get an exemption on so much tobacco. Okay. I just figured out why you're coming here. Yeah. So I can go to Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, and, but Kate, and wait, Kate, wait, to wait. be fair, it's 45 minutes to Ogdensburg, it's seven hours to you. That would be a really dumb way to buy sins. You know? <laughs> and I actually, somebody messaged me and said, You are supposed to spit when you're using Zin. No, you're not. Well, he said, <laughs> That's why. Pussies. <laughs> <For> pussies. <laughs> if he's that... spitting, he, he's a fucking chump. There's no way you're doing it. Spitters or quitters. I was with Patrick. <laughs> Patrick Tour is the one that first sh- introduced me to these at the Olympia. Because I was at the Olympia and I was like hungry as a motherfucker. So I was doing like actual chew. And he's like, here, try these. These are way cleaner. You don't need to spit, do anything. And I know in Nordic countries, those are like, you get kids in like fucking like middle school doing Zins. It's like, really? like the most normal thing over there. And I've had a lot of, since I talked about it on my Instagram once, I've had a lot of guys from like Finland, Norway, Sweden message me and be like, oh yeah, I fucking love these things, you know? But none of those guys spit. So can I ask you this? puts one in and he just fucking chills. So let me just ask you this. Health-wise, it's probably healthy because nicotine is actually a nootropic and it's Great not it. It's not actually unhealthy at all. Yeah. No, there's there's so, no tobacco. There's no like carcinogens in there. It's just, just nicotine. That's it. So is there anything unhealthy about the Zin pouch? That well, you I'm know sure of. That you, that you know of. But I'm, I'm convincing myself that they're healthy for me, not unhealthy. So I'm just... <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Couple things, Mike. Yeah. You don't sleep with your wife. No, you don't I sleep wrote, in the same bed. I, I wrote some notes down this week. <laughs> <laughs> He's astonished at my life. I think we're right we talked about, we talk about this weird. already. No, we didn't. I didn't know this. Yeah, we did. Did we talk about it? Because I was talking to him about coming to stay here, and he said I don't sleep with my wife. And I he said, told well, us on the podcast that they slept in different rooms. Yeah, I totally didn't really? remember. And I was like, well, I got two extra beds, so you guys don't have to sleep in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you, Mike. Uh, it started with it started because of snoring. So she yeah. was just like, "Fuck uh, this, I'm out of here." Yeah. And now, now that I have a CPAP, it's like I don't snore unless I take it off, which I sometimes maybe do. I'm the fuck. Maybe I'm the fucking pothead. I totally didn't remember that. Yeah. Do you, do you like uh, your CPAP? Yeah, I'm used to it. I'm getting. I'm used to it now, but like I still have some nights where I'm like, "Fuck this thing," I throw it off. But yeah, I've had mine for probably three years, and I can't get used to it. No, you still no. sleep. Mask you have though. No, I. Uh, it's the one that covers my mouth and nose. Just get the nose one. Or get the I pillows. tried it. I tried it. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I play with different ones. I got to play with the guy. I'm getting, I'm getting my nose like surgery soon. Is off, it fucks you up. I, I found them so hard to get used to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 like once just to see if it would help. I don't think I have any sleep. Like I don't snore, like have any issues sleeping. I know everyone that says that says that, but, um, but like I, Melissa tell, like I literally don't even snore at all. And I, I sleep really? well, I feel rested, but I wanted to try it once. I was like, I just want to try and see if this would make my sleep better. And, yeah, the full mouth one, like that, I found really hard. The nose ones are way easier. Yeah, yeah. maybe I'll try the pillows again. I I, I got to get my nose fixed. I should yeah. be getting it done soon, I hope. Yeah. Uh, So I wanted to touch on a couple really cool things I saw. Most importantly was this one. Rami looks like he has arms again. Mm. This isn't recent. Are you sure? There's absolutely no chance. I don't believe that's recent. This says most recent update. Yeah, I don't believe that's recent. How much you want to bet? I'll bet, but I mean they've they've been known to post pictures like this that aren't recent, so I don't I don't believe it. it looks pretty yeah, hard but, if it's recent. Yeah, but you know what? I think it would be it would do more damage to him to do that if his arms weren't back because people are gonna be like, "You fucking lied." I think it's just posting up a picture, man. I don't know. Did don't did Rami post it? I don't know. Let me go to his page. Who is the best bodybuilder? Rami. Yeah, it's right here. Always together, my brother Kuwait 2020. Oh, that's not <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fucking shit. I was all excited. I'm like, Rami's back. That's just not what Rami's physique looks like right now. I didn't believe that for a second. No. Yeah, I was hopeful. Okay. So aside from that, there was a couple other guys I wanted to touch on. One is Force MD, who looks like he's exploded mm-hmm. with size. 
and he's going to fucking – does anybody know his debut? He doesn't look like he's that close to showtime, so. Is he going to – What show is Regan doing? Yeah, I thought he was doing a European show. Yeah, he's like 56 days out last time I saw his update, so. Okay. Something in the next two months. Okay, look at this. These two guys are competing this year. I feel like that Vito doesn't look like that though. Since that video, I feel like these are all like weird. They're yeah. they're yeah. super fucking sharpened and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look, obviously he's super impressive and his shape is crazy. He's got a lot of muscle, but he doesn't look the same in his videos. On yeah, stage. but he's you have un- to remember, But you have to remember that but that guest posing video is nine weeks out. Like, it's not like it was close. No, you're right. But this so, picture was taken at the same time, and this doesn't. Yeah, look so I mean, like you no, post not- this picture like a week, day, day, two days later. Yeah. After falling off the stage. No, yeah. no, no. I'm not disputing that this isn't sharpened at all. I'm just saying I know his guest posing wasn't impressive, but it was also nine weeks out. So sure. No, I, I still think he's wildly impressive. I mean, there's yeah. no doubt about that. But and, I, I'm I'm not one hundred percent sold yet until I see him on an Olympias like or a pro stage next to like Olympia level guys, you know? Yeah, because right, we have very little to go by with him right now. He did that yeah. one amateur show last year. He got his pro card, but, you know, it's an amateur show. But do I think he can win pro shows? Sure. Do I think he can be a top five at the Olympia? I'm not sold on that 100%. Wait, yet. right, mm-hmm. wait. Here it is, 130 kg. So he's like, what, 180 pounds? 288. 280. That's fucking, uh, so that, that, died, that, died, that died it down is, what, 255? 286. Yeah, that would say 250-ish. I know, but I'm saying that dieted down yeah. from this. It's like 255, yeah. 250. Yeah. yeah. This is that Brazilian guy, right? But I think he's a little bit taller. I don't know how tall he is. But yeah, I just, I really, really am impressed by his physique, man. It's really well put together. And like, look at that. There's nothing mm-hmm. missing. Mm-hmm. Everything's there. Condition's really good. It's really aesthetic. Yeah, he's still like, a little thin in spots, but it's a super pretty physique. Yeah, but this was a year ago. So yeah. I saw a recent picture of his back that looked pretty impressive, at least. Yeah, in that, Milo, in that Milo, picture. Milo's posted it. It's right yeah. here. There it is, yeah. Like that's yeah, fucking nuts. Sure. So I don't know. I'm excited to see I guess calves too. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see um what show he's doing and how he's gonna end up. Uh so there's that, and then there was Vito, and then there's Andrew. Andrew posted, yeah. Andrew's what from Texas a month out, a month and a half, six weeks. Yeah, about that, yeah. He looks good, man. Oh. Uh yeah, it says uh it's not a recent this is from the Arnold. Don't be reading the post. You yeah, I did the same with Rami. So I guess Andrew did say that this isn't recent. But he did post something recent, didn't he? Isn't this recent? Well, he posted this, but I guess this is Yeah, this is not from this prep. Oh, okay. I got to read more. I don't know. Uh, yeah, see, it's the hoodie's still on. <laughs> it says it says in the description there, the hoodie's still on a few more weeks till blah, blah, blah. This is recent, though. Yeah, this it was is, Steve, yeah. This was imposing with Steve, yeah. Yeah. So, his back, his, I'll say this for sure. His back looks better as far as uh-huh. size goes. As far as conditioning goes, I don't know if he's going to look better than the Arnold, but his back definitely looks bigger. Yeah. Like, he's added some fucking meat to the fucking lats there. Sure. It definitely is caught up to everything. I'm just curious to see what kind of detail he's going to have. Like if the hamstrings are going to be stripped out, like how that's all going to look. I mean, man, Hunter looks fucking bonkers. He's going to have. Does he ever? Dude, yeah. That, that update he just posted today. I fucking shit my pants. Yeah. So Ben has been sending me updates all the way through. Well, look at the one that he just posted. No, no, I know. I know. I know. I got it yesterday. Um, I'm like, I'm like, I've never seen, uh, it like, the, I've the, never sh- seen, I've never seen Hunter look grainy. Yeah, like the, the front shots and side shots look good, and I, I was impressed with them, but the back shots were so much improved. Yeah, the back double. You know? mm-hmm. The back double is the one that always hurt him And, like, most. this is by far the best condition I've seen him in, it, like, especially yeah. at two and a half weeks out, you know? Well, look, I think him and Ben had a talk, and he's really given Ben the reins to do like, what he look at do. Look at the difference. Look at the fucking... Yeah. yeah, yeah. The hardness in his back is so much different. Oh, you know? yeah. Look at Hunter's that, right? back. Yeah, that's top. A, that's back top not a, five. Not a that's fucking. A good, that's a good back point man. anymore. Mm-hmm. I can't like, wait to see him. The bottom, very complete. You know, thick from the erectors right up, and when he pulls it back here, like look, yeah. you know, nutty man, fucking cr- strided right across the erectors all the way into the lats. That's going to be a great show, him and Andrew. But you know, the yeah. way he's looking right now, I'm leaning. I'm leaning Hunter. Hunter's going to beat him. 
I yeah, this this I will be hard. This will be hard for Andrew to beat. He's he's just I so quick and he's so complete. You know, mm-hmm. like Andrew has shots that he can win. Like, can he be, beat him in like a front double or something or an abs and thigh? Sure, but when you you know piece it together every single pose, mm-hmm. side shots where Hunter's definitely thicker front to back. Look at that. Look at that. Mm-hmm. You know, the condition, the conditioning in the glutes and hands and the stuff. Like, I think it's going to be a tall order for him. You know, listen. But, I mean, it's going to be an incredible show either way. They're both fucking you know top eight bodybuilders on the planet. Yeah. Like, to get, that, you know, to get to two guys of that level in a regular season show is a treat for everybody, you know? This is the yeah. tricky, this is the thing that I think people don't realize also when they look at Hunter. So one, he's markedly improved, like in muscle muscularity and conditioning and like just completeness. And fullness too, roundness. That, but the thing that people don't understand is the way he looks on Instagram is not even close. No, to he's he way bigger. Yeah. Yeah. He's so much, he's just like Samson. It's like he's so much fucking bigger when you see him on stage next to the other guys that I, are... think, I think this is with a lot of the like the pros that people just like don't understand too like they see pictures and stuff and like you know he's staying there by himself you don't get the context like let's put a regular kid from the gym next to him in that video and you'll really fucking understand you know yeah well you man, know... look even sam sorry paul but even samson no. at the olympia when he walked out to that first call out i was like holy fuck Oh my god! Well, you yeah. see, yeah. Rammy in that first group, and he was like yeah. fucking. Like, he was like as big, you know, muscularity wise and structurally, he's bigger, you know. And then, and then at that guest posing in Pittsburgh, I was like, "Fucking Hunter's bigger than everybody on the stage." Yeah, I was like, "What the fuck?" Hunter looked good. Yeah, Hunter's gonna shut a lot of people up. Yeah, I actually, I actually am gonna predict that Hunter's in the top five this year. I agree. It's, I, it's if they can, if they how can, he's looking here, if he keeps yeah, like based yeah, on this, you yeah. know, just like a, a little two week improvement, just bring it in a little harder. And just keep that fullness and that graininess and, and and muscularity that he has. He's going to be hard to be for literally everybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I really think, I really think he gives everybody a run for their money if he's a little yeah. sharper than this and peaked properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be fucking it's impressive. Exciting, man. It's going to be mm-hmm. exciting. Uh, Andrew Horse Hunter Chicago oh, we Pro. Chicago, we got Chicago this weekend. Chicago Pro is Saturday. You see Della Rosa and Stan. Oh yeah. Right up. De La Rosa jumped in. John, yeah, I saw pictures hey. of him recently. Yeah, good, good <laughs> for good him too. He looked good. Yeah. What's uh, what's Johnny looking like? He's like really John. not put up much. He just put one kind of like a most yeah. muscular, like just posing on Skype with Patrick, which I, I. Oh, like. he's, working, he's working with Patrick. Yeah, he's been working with Patrick for a while. He was working with Patrick when I was down there living there too. How long has John been gone for? Five years or so? No, I think he. Uh, oh, actually, maybe it's four for sure. It's been a while. Yeah. Sure. I'm excited to see him up there, man. Mm-hmm. Fuck, he's thick. I think eh? it's going to be a good shakeup to the lineup. John is impressive on stage, man. He's got some good parts. He's really fucking thick. Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to be. I think he's going to be a good because there's no like, there's no like crazy, crazy heavy hitters in this lineup. You know, mm-hmm. this is him on stage. So people, yeah, have that's an idea. the year he won Toronto. That's 19, right? Yeah. So people have an idea what he can look like when he's there, when mm-hmm. he's on. That's recent right there. Is that like no, if you go up there, the no pump top right, like you can see, like oh yeah, there's some muscle on this guy, man. Ooh, I was yeah. training with him for a long time. Like he's 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 thick in person, man. He's still got all that muscle for sure. Yeah. It's good to see him back. Yeah. Okay, so him and Stanimal are in. Anybody else? We have Justin, and then you have Blessing. Yep. And then I, I that's kind of probably your pretty the obvious the names, names. Four. yeah yeah uh, but the lineup is there on bodybuilding without borders i think yeah, carlos too right carlos i didn't see carlos on the lineup oh okay no carlos is not doing that he's doing tampa and texas oh uh let's see here this is not chicago this is classic yeah go down it is somewhere here i know i saw it there, there. it is and then just add yeah. Add the two that I said. So I think well Patrick you know, Moore's in there too. So you got another yeah. guy Olympia. And I Manuel Longoria yeah. is pretty good too. He's yeah. uh he's Paul, he's a big, big dude. Paul, what do you think? Uh is this the whole lineup right here up to Justin there? Plus John well, and, plus and Stan. John and Stan. And Stan too. Stan looks uh, really fucking good in Vancouver, man. Oh yeah, blessing. he did. Blessing hasn't posted shit, so we have no idea. I have a feeling Blessing looks really good. That's why he hasn't posted shit. It's it's so hard to say. Like when guys don't post, it's one way or the other. It's either they are not confident in their progress pictures yet, 
So they're not posting them or they're fucking like just wanting to blow the doors off, you know? But I, I think, think he's going to come I, in. I think because he's so outwardly like charismatic, mm-hmm. I think he's trying to pull something off here that's special. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he would. I don't think Blessing would commit to the show if he's not ready. Well, I don't think he would not post unless he was trying to hide something. Yeah. Has he been right. saying anything at all? Not that I've seen. Yeah, I haven't seen anything either. This guy in that group. Um, in terms of like muscularity and, and full overall size, um, but like the conditioning and like the flow of the physique is always like the wild card, right? What like are you? His legs, yeah. his legs are up to match yet. How his conditioning is going to look next to someone like you know Justin or Stan? Like Stan was fucking skinless in Vancouver. You know? He was. Like oh. even for a guy that was out muscled by a significant amount next to Hassan, like look, Hassan was a clear winner, but Stan held his own for a guy that probably had. 40 pounds less muscle because yeah, he, he, his conditioning was amazing you know we mm-hmm. should say real quick congratulations to hassan for getting his yep. first yeah, well not, deserved. not his first win but his, his win first win of the year yeah mm. and qualifying um yeah, he definitely was extremely dominant in terms of muscularity i mean in that lineup like look obviously you could really see how fucking goddamn big hassan is yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 okay so uh, we won't take too much time on Vancouver because it was just kind of a one man show. We'll move on to Chicago. Uh, Paul, I want to know what you think as a judge, as a pro judge. What are you? What are your picks going to look like? Can I see the lineup again? Well, there's only two guys on that page. That well, right now I'm, I'm going blessing, based so based going... on. Uh... So knowing John and Stanimal are doing the show, you're going blessing. Then who? And Justin or John, uh, um, that'd be close. If, if if John comes in tight, I could see John being hard to hard to. You know, I could see John pushing blessing. You know, I could see that being the top two if uh if John's hard enough. But yeah, right I mean, now, just just go by. John is like a a, a you know a, a very high caliber bodybuilder. So very high, yeah. If he's a John of old, then he could definitely win the show. Agreed. Um, but there's so, so much un- there's so much unknown with him not being on stage in a few years. You know. Patrick Moore too. That he's an Olympian. You know, he's no slouch. Yeah, um, I don't think Patrick Moore can beat Blessing or Justin no. or anything, or even Stan. How Stan's been looking, um, but I think that'll be a, a pretty solid top five. I could, I could see Patrick. You know, sneaking a third. You know, I, I mean, I, I haven't seen him in a while since last year's what? What was the last show he did? Arnold's. Paul, stop, stop wasting time. Um. Okay. So what do you want? <laughs> top three, top five, top five, top five, top five. Top five. Okay. Blessing. Blessing. Wait, let me, write, let me write this down. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Look at this lighting. I had to move the laptop. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you posing? And I don't... Okay. He's but... trying to find this good light. I'm looking okay. for the, the goon kitchen lighting. All right, Chicago. Paul. Ready? Blessing. Blessing. John. John. Justin. Stan. Justin. Stan, and the and fifth, I'm gonna go uh, Longoria. Dark who's horse. Long, who's Longoria? I've been Longoria. Eman- Emmanuel. He's got a lot of yeah. He's got a lot of muscle. He just hasn't I've, in the past. He just hasn't come in condition, but he's a big guy with a uh, with good shape. Let's take a look at who's yeah, that. What's going on, guys? Today's podcast is brought to you by Bashmouth from Bashmouth.com, and as you guys know, I have been partnered with them for quite a while now. The energy gum market is growing. And they are killing it. They've changed their packaging to this resealable bag that people seem to really love. Throw it in your gym bag, throw it in the office, throw it in your car. Wherever you're going to need a shot of energy, this is where you're going to leave it. I'm going to show you guys the website really quick. If you go to bashmouth.com and use code RBP, you get 10% off. Just go to shop. There's free shipping on orders over 30 bucks, as you can see here. If you go to shop, you can get a sample bag. You can get a stick. You can get a full box. You get what you need. And now you can get bags too, but they have all this merchandise as well. Just use code RBP at checkout and get 10% off guys. Check out bash melt gum. If you need an energy boost, this is the way to go. Is he up here anywhere? Jay living goods doing two twelve. Oh, right? sorry. I forgot about Patrick Moore too, though. So who are you putting in fifth then? I'm going to put Patrick Moore over. Uh... Jay looks good. eh? Who? I haven't seen him, but he's a little tank. I trained him one time. He's I saw, he posted oh, Jay. Uh, what is actually really good like that was the one thing was always like the thing with him and his condition looks really good the show yeah. yeah but jordan i think he's great too but jordan janowitz is fucking nuts oh jordan janowitz is fucking sick yes. look at this guy i don't know if you know who this is uh yeah i do no i was talking to mike look at this oh. first this guy's fucking crazy the leg 
Yeah. This is him now. And his side leg is like absurd. Yeah. Yeah. This is him. And he gets in like nasty, nasty condition. Mm. You know? How does Jay look? I haven't seen He's both the picks thing. He looks good. Jay looks Jay's got a nice physique. Jay's got a beautiful shape. Pull him up. I'm gonna one sec. Wait. Where the fuck did that go? There it is. Jay's right here. That's him there. He's he funny. posted there's an up uh there's a recent update though. Go down more. Yeah, yeah see, this thing's gonna be in a that's good great. Spot. Yeah. You know, Jay, he uh, he dominated his weight class for years at nationals, but just he would lose you overall to bigger guys. But yeah. it's nice to see him finally up there. I still think he needs a little bit more mass, but once he puts it on, he's gonna be hard to beat. Yeah, as long as he can keep that shape, he's got crazy shape. He's gotta he's gotta, I think, balance out his shoulders, arms. He's got the Asian legs. Yeah, yep. he's got the sure massive, does. Fu- massive fucking legs. He's got a back too. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, his back is good. But not, it's still not up to par with his lower body, though. Right. It's got to catch up to his lower body still. Yeah. He's, he's, got, he's, a, he's a nice kid, too. I like Jay. Like, look at this. Look at the fucking legs on this kid. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I just think once he balances this out, he's going to be hard to beat. Sure. Uh, you know why a lot of guys do that? They tip back on their front relaxed. Yeah. Because he's trying to elongate his waist and make it yeah. more narrow. Yeah, but it's like you pull your hip back and let your waist taper look better. Right. No, put, your shoulder, not, put your shoulders I'm, in front, you know? I'm not saying that's the right way to do it. I'm just saying that's why most guys do it. Is they're trying to stretch the sternum out <clears throat> and pull the sides in. Oh. And I think it takes away from your shoulders when you do that. Yep, it does because it rolls yep. rolls them behind you. You can't like come yeah. over top of your delt. Yeah. Yeah, you like lose that. some of your taper too. See, so you look at him there, like yep. before he just before rolled he, forward. Yeah, before he rolled back, he looked like he had nice delts, mm-hmm. and then he hides them. Uh, okay, so Paul, you got. Blessing, John, Justin, Stan, and Patrick Moore. Mike? Yep. Uh, I might put Patrick in front of Stan, though. <laughs> I'll go. Patrick in front of Stan. Is this your final call? No. Um, <laughs> let's see what everyone else has to say. No, 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 no. We'll no, come no, back. No, you're the judge. You got to make the first Okay, stand in, fr- stand in front of Patrick. Stand in front of Patrick. You already got stand in front of Patrick. I switched it, then I switched back. Stay in front of Patrick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mike. Uh, Ian, 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 if you want to know why you're going last, because I don't want you to influence their decisions. Oh, by the way, <laughs> a, guy, a guy who was like a fucking an engineer or something sent me a real calculating spreadsheet to calculate who wins in our bets now with an actual algorithm made into it. Send oh. it to me, and we'll plug everything in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, blessing. What else? Um, Stan, Justin, Justin, John, John. And who the fuck else is there? Who am I missing? Patrick Moore. I said blessing first. Yeah, Patrick. Okay. Ian, I'm gonna go. Justin, Blessing, Stan, John, Patrick. Justin, Blessing, Stan, John, Patrick. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go. Paul looks like he's fucking brewing over there. He wants to oh, yeah, I'm, No, I am. you can now. I'm good. I'm going to go. Uh, <laughs> blessing. <laughs> Blessing, Stan, John, Patrick, uh, Emmanuel, and then Justin. Oh. Huh. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> what, is a man, what does Emmanuel look like? I had to do it. I had to do it. I was like, your comment section is going to go wild after this. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I did it. I just, uh, just, poking to, just poking to a little fun. Can you bring up Longoria if we had? He's impressive. Yeah, yeah I will. One second. Uh, Take your bets first, though, because you're – you know – one second. Emmanuel I just, Longoria. I've never seen him come in condition yet, but he's got a ton of muscle and he's got good shape. Are you sure you're thinking about the right guy? Yeah, that's him. Holy fuck. He's got a big back. Wow. Well, that's got to be warped. That picture, huh? He's pretty impressive in person. You're competing against him, Ian? I am competing against him, yeah. 
Yeah. He's a big guy, right? Just doesn't come conditioned. Or yeah. hasn't yet, at least. He's yeah. a fucking massive God, dude. God damn. Yeah. And he's got nice shape, too, for a big dude. I feel like it's such a shame when you see somebody this big that doesn't come in shape. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I judge a show that he competed in, and Gary Udit was a head judge, and Gary told him, was like, you got to come in condition. You got a crazy physique. So hopefully he listened. Well, he has the potential. To win. Has, these yeah. are five week out shots, though, and that's not. That's not five weeks out? Yeah, that's a little behind for five and a half. Yeah, for sure. But he has the potential to win the fucking show if he's in shape. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't see him beating like a, a guy like Blockin or anything. Okay, Based so on just, those pictures, yeah. So just for the sake of conversation for the podcast, I think for me, it comes down to... is See Justin, your fucking picks. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no caveats, just Take fucking it is. <laughs> Okay, I don't think Justin is going to hold enough size, and I think Blessing will be in shape. So I'm going to say Blessing. If Je- if if Blessing's in shape, I think he's going to be too big for Justin. I don't sh- disagree, but I'm I think Justin will be crisper. I think his posing will be really good. I think he'll display his physique well. I think he'll be tough to beat. The thing is, I don't think Blessing has bad shape, so he's going to be I bigger. Has, I don't think he has bad shape, but I think Justin's definitely has better legs. Uh, Justin's got really good arms, has really nice shape, and he's definitely going to be in condition. I wouldn't so. say he's got better legs. I say he's more balanced. He's more balanced, okay. Yeah, yeah. I would say he's more balanced. Yeah, because uh, Blessing just has a bigger upper body, so yes. Yeah. But I think the size might be overwhelming. Because usually si- size is not over- size won't be enough if the condition's not there. Right. Or, or if the shape is really bad. But I don't think Blessing has bad shape, and I just think his conditioning's going to be on. Okay. Well, then fucking yeah. put me where your mouth is. I'm going to. Blessing... <laughs> blessing and then I wonder, you know, Stan is getting like harder and fucking harder by the show. Stan, Stan was the yeah. hard one for me to place. Like I could have put Stan as yeah. I could have put him ahead of Blessing in my mind, to be honest. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He he's just, he looked like he was made of cement in fucking Vancouver. He, he yeah, have, I know. He doesn't have very much faith in Blessing. Well, he's been a little consistent, you know. I Wait, I think Blessing at his best can absolutely win the show. Hands down with a perfect score. But... When we're talking about making bets, I can't bet on inconsistency. Like, yeah. and you know, Blessing was good at New York, and then he wasn't good at the Olympia, and he was off another show, and he was good at another show. I know Justin will be on. I know Stan will be on. So, like, if I'm making bets, I have to bet on what I can guarantee. Yeah. I, can, yeah. I 100% but know you, but you that have Justin to... and Stan will be on. I'm not even one one percent unsure about that. Okay, but like we just saw in Vancouver, and we've seen in many shows. We saw it at the Arnold. We've seen it at the Olympia level. Sure. Not everybody has to be 100% conditioned to beat somebody who is isn't 100% conditioned. I agree, but I don't think Blessing is that guy. Blessing well, isn't Samson. It, it depends. No, no. Blessing isn't Samson and Blessing isn't Hassan Mustafa. So I, I, I No, no. Yeah. Blessing is not Samson, but I guess what I'm basing it on is how much more muscle is he going to have? That's going to be, to me, the, the caveat. Well, how, how much, much bigger muscle? will he look? Yeah, yeah, but how much more muscle? But it's like, okay, do I think he's going to have a bigger upper body than most of these guys? Sure. But do I think that that bigger upper body might also accentuate the discrepancy between his upper body and lower body? And do I think that the other guys will be harder than him? Yes. You make a good point. And, and I think that yeah, his for sure. is getting a little on the wider side. And I think Justin has a really fucking pretty V taper. And I think Stan's midsection is like, not like crazy pretty. It's very pretty, but it's not like Justin's where it's like super fucking crazy lats. But yeah. his abs are like fucking granite, like dug in hard, you know? Mm-hmm. See, I look at it like this. In a case of like the California Pro where you had somebody like Ross who wasn't the biggest and he beat Tonio, but Tonio is also not the biggest. Tonio is only 218 on stage. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So Ross is, like, actually, is actually heavier than Tonio. So yeah. we haven't, what I'm saying is we haven't seen like a lighter guy beat a heavier guy, really. Oh, I mean, like, like, we, well, like we just saw is, a stand. Like we, more, a stand is more muscular than me and he's probably more muscular than Phil overall. Not a good but, comparison. It's not. It's not the you, same. You no. and Hassan. You and Hassan on stage. Even though he has more muscle in certain body parts, you I'm still o- a big. Yeah. You occupy the same space. Yeah. Right. Right. Where what I make the comparison of Hassan versus Stan, where yeah, Stan Stan is hard as nails. Aesthetically, he's pleasing, but Hassan just overwhelmed him with too much muscle. I agree. And I don't think Blessing has that much muscle, but it really depends how much muscle Justin has put on in the year. Yeah, I think Justin's uh, well, bigger than we uh, think. 
And we haven't seen anything of, of blessing in a while. We don't know how his that's, how his that's offseason tricky, was. That's the tricky part. I don't know yeah. what. Yeah. yeah. But for a guy who's very cautious about his social media and that, you got to think there's a reason why he's staying hidden. You know, and I, I think and a, a good reason. I don't think it's because he's trying to hide because he looks bad. I That's think he's I just think. trying to be aloof. I think he's trying to play the... Justin looks like he's losing size, too, to me. Yeah, we talked about that, yeah. The, the thought, last update like, picture... Through the, like, through, the, through the chest area, through, like, yeah. the, the extremities are staying with their app, but the chest area is, like, flattening out. And the back's good, but it's, like, there was, there was only flattening one, out of here. There was one update I saw uh, that he posted... The side tricep on here. bodybuilding and borders, I think it was, where it looked like the 3D version of it was like the side, to, the front to back thickness was starting mm-hmm. to to go. Yeah, no, like look, and, but I, I also think there's a difference between taking a fasted picture when you're cranking down mm-hmm. heat versus like yeah you know, when you're yeah. filled you know, out yeah when you're you've been carving up for three days and you're not fucking pushing the diet and the cardio and you know. Stuff like that. So look, look, yep. just look. Justin can win. He's a. Oh, this is an yeah. acute, is an acute, is an acute Justin, scenario. You know, Justin. Justin is a phenomenal bodybuilder. He's got an amazing physique, and I think all it's going to well, really I come. Mean, down yeah, blessing has won the New York Pro. Like I he's, think, I think all it's going to come down to is like I said this like a month ago. That all it's going to come down to is is blessing in shape, and has Justin put on enough muscle? Yeah, those are the two fucking things. If if blessing's in shape, I think he wins. Agreed. If Justin's put on a significant amount of mass, I think he can win. It's What's really Justin just... Wang? Has he said anything about his weight? I haven't heard anything. No. So I'm going to go blessing Justin. But I mean, you know, Justin won his pro card as a heavyweight, so he was yes. 25. Right. Let's say he's put on even 20 pounds, which would be a lot. Look, the last time I talked, the last time I talked to him, like before he left hostile or whatever, I think he said he was aiming for something like 230, 235. Yeah, I think he'll be in the mid 230s. Yeah. 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 So if he's there, Blessing's going to outweigh him by 10 or 15 pounds. Probably so then it, so then it just depends if he's in shape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm going to go Blessing, Justin, Stan, John, Patrick. And the only reason I don't have John higher, because John, I think the John of old could win this show. I just don't know if John is all the way back. Yeah. That's the only reason I have him where and I have it him. Might, it might take him a couple shows, you yeah. know, yeah. to get back into the old form. Yeah, when you step away for a while, it takes time to to get it all back. Yeah, for sure. But I'm really glad they're doing the show because it makes when state with Stan and John entering, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Hundred yeah. percent. When I saw the data, I was so excited for that. Yeah. So if we get to Tampa, are we saying like Mo, is Mo doing Tampa? Well, he's got to do something eventually. Yeah. Because because then it's then you have Hunter Andrew. Oh, Wait, no, no Andrew's, Andrew's doing Texas. Him. Andrew's in Texas. So Carlos Tampa, we have. Hunter, Carlos, Mo, maybe, yeah, maybe, and I. Justin said he might go on. Yeah. This is this is from we spoke a while back. Yeah, he said he might go on and do Tampa. Stan, if he doesn't win, probably who knows. Yep, I think Tampa and Texas are going to be the biggest shows of the year. I think Texas is going to be the fucking yeah. One. I'm Texas looking forward to that one. Is Martin doing any shows? Oh, Fitzwater. Yeah, I'd love to see him. But yeah, I love, I love his physique. He's, He's like, got a crazy physique. Ever since he started working with Branch and figured out his condition, yeah, I like seeing. I like. I like Martin. He shit. looked really good at the shows he did last year. Yeah, when so, is Texas? What weekend? August fifteenth or something like that, and then mid mid August. Because I think Tampa is the first weekend in August, and I think Texas is the week after. Mm. Um. Okay, so we don't know. We don't know who's doing those shows for sure. Not yet. And we don't know any that Regan. What's Regan? We don't know what Regan's doing. Well, a European show? show. We thought I heard. Let's go to his Instagram and see. Yeah, how good though. He looks yeah, he does. Crazy. I can't wait. How many did say it is? I'll pull up the IFBB schedule and we can figure it out. <laughs> we'll deduce <laughs> the information. Detectives. Because <laughs> I think he said fifty-six days out when he posted that this weekend or last weekend. You know, I got to tell you something. I'm really, in, I'm really excited for Regan to prove people wrong. I feel like. This is, I think. I well, think wait, he, whoa, 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 wait! Prove Regan wa- people wrong in what? Like Regan has won shows. He's been to the Olympia. Regan wait, is an elite bodybuilder. You know. Wait, wait. <laughs> in the last, in the last year or so, because Regan hasn't, because when Regan came out, people were like, "If this guy realizes his potential, he's going to win the Olympia." So, so people, you, so win the Olympia? just one minute, people have put this, people put this. Thing, expectation they attach this expectation to him 
Sure. And when and when he didn't realize the expectation or the potential right away, people fell off. Yeah. And I just think it's not fair. I think sometimes somebody it takes someone longer to fill out their physique than someone else. You know what I think is actually hurt Regan more than anything, um, in terms of his like career and and, and the hype he's got is the shows he picks. I think Regan always competes at the end of the year in European shows and he doesn't get into like the mix yeah. in North American bodybuilding. He doesn't and get exposure here. No, like when you're going off and you're doing a show like post Olympia or shows that are at the end of the year and it's like those last, those end of the year qualifiers, they don't get the same traction, the same kind of attention, you know, like, mm. and l look at all the shows he's done. He's doing Romania, he's doing Prague, he's doing, you know, all these shows. When was the last time he even did a North American show? Like, I can't even. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't yeah. he jump into Texas and just? I guess, I guess he would have done that one where he where uh, Sean Clarita won it, which is what one of the California Legion. Shows. Legion, yeah. Legion, Nevada. yeah. But you know, like other than that, he's really doing European shows. Like you know, for him, you're go do Toronto Pro, go do yeah. fucking Cali, go do you know, go get in New York, get in Tampa, get in Texas. Like, look, you might not win, but to get in those stages next to elite bodybuilders and have an impact is what's going to give you that hype and get that yeah, but momentum back. You know, you're, you know what? You're right. That's a really good point, but he also could have won. If he would have done Vancouver, if yeah. he was in shape, he might've been able to beat Hassan. But sure. you know what, Regan, I, I don't and know if Regan. He put him into California or New York. Could he have beat maybe Tonio or, or um, Ross or Ross? Yeah. Maybe, you know, like, yeah. you know, I don't know Regan personally that well. Not, but everybody else you could have. Okay. Do you think it's his ultimate goal though to be Mr. Olympia? No. I don't think it is either. I think I think Regan's happy making money, you know, being a good, great bodybuilder. But, but but that's the thing I don't like. That's that what you just did. I feel like you're attaching, and I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I feel like I feel like we're attaching like our views of what we yeah. think he's doing. Yeah. Without, has anybody asked him? No, I, I'm basing that. Like I said, I don't know him very well. I know him a little bit, but not that well. But I'm just basing that on. Just his is is I don't know like what he puts out online. Okay, that. Like, but let's look at, let's look at let's look at the facts and not what we think. Mm -hmm. The fact is he's taken a year off to get fucking huge, and he's put on a lot of size. So it's like if somebody didn't want to be Mister Olympia or if they didn't want to win or if they didn't want to do well, why the fuck would they do that? Like why would he go out of his way to look like this if he didn't care? I'm not saying he doesn't care. No, no, I'm, but just I'm, like, not, like... I'm not saying just you, but the fact that you, it was interesting what you just said, because you said, does he really want to be Mr. Olympia? I don't really get that impression. I feel like he just likes being a bodybuilder and making money. For sure, he probably likes making money. But at the same oh, time, at the same time, one minute, at the same time, I don't think he has to be that big to make money. He was making money when he was 150 pounds lighter, 20 pounds lighter. True. True. So, you know, maybe he loves the bodybuilding lifestyle still so too, what, though. So what Look, I'm saying is, I want is, to be the best bodybuilder I can be, but do I think I'm going to win the Mr. Olympia? No. Does that stop me from wanting to no, compete and be the best I can? I think 99% of guys competing don't think or want to necessarily like. Look, do I want to be Mr. No, Olympia? No, no, no. But you're saying two different things now. You guys originally said, does he want to be Mr. Olympia? Not does he think I he can be Mr. Olympia? Yeah. yeah, I'm not saying he thinks he can be Mr. Olympia. I'm saying. Does he want to win shows? Does he want to be great? I don't think well, people go to yeah. that extent. For example, they don't. I think we for example, yes. you, you take someone like Samson, someone like Nick. I know they're right on the doorstep, those guys too, though. But yeah. like you could tell by their Instagram, by whatever, that their ultimate goal is to be Mr. Olympia. Yeah, but, I don't know if I see the same things out of Regan, but you know, but he but may not to, be as close as those guys are either. But, but you have to understand something as a competitor. So, so I'll use myself as an example. When you're competing you only see the next goal that you can potentially reach. You don't see yeah. like, you don't compete in a small show and be like, I'm going to go win the Mr. Olympia. You go, I'm going to kill these next small shows. I'm going to qualify for the Olympia. Then when you qualify for the Olympia and you're in the top 10 or you're in the top five, then you go, I'm going to win the Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, nobody like when it's that far out of reach I goes, agree. goes, I'm going to yeah. win the Mr. Olympia. Right. So you're not going to hear that from Regan. Right. He would, Cause if he did say that, people would ridicule him. But yeah. one thing, one thing I can tell you about Regan too, because I've trained him a bunch and I was around him a lot. Like obviously, since he moved, obviously I haven't. Is that like his focus? From what I perceive, he's a very smart businessman yeah. compared to like a lot of these bodybuilders. So if his focus seems shifted somewhere else, it's because maybe some other guys should focus their shift back to like kind of being how he is. Because the kid makes money and he's yeah. successful and he fucking is making a living at the sport that's probably going to carry him through yeah. past the sport. Well, mm -hmm. the, also, like, he's also been doing that. Like, I've, yeah, known, like Re I've, known, I've, known, like, yeah. I've known Regan for 10 years, and he's been making a fucking mint. Right. Yeah. 
like ever He's since I, ever so since do, I've known him. Does that play into it? Like because he's been so yeah. successful financially, does that, well, you know, does that make I, you as hungry? I think it as takes a, the pressure off of him a little bit yeah, to be right. like, why do I have to grind? Why do I have to do this when I, I can will, like, I take will, my time and just do it how I want to do it? You know what I mean? I will. I will admit that. I will admit that when you're fucking making bank, you don't. There's not a driving hunger necessarily like somebody who has nothing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I just think that whole like, well, he doesn't really care. I think that's just his the way he acts online. Could be. Could well, be. He, he, trains, he, trains, he, trains, he trains like an animal too. Because yeah. I've trained him a bunch. The thing he is, not, when, when he I see quit. when I see this, I'm like, you don't get to look like that unless you care. No. Right. Yeah. So I just don't know if that's a fair. I don't think that's a fair thing, and I hear it all the time. But that's the, the other reason I think you hear it all the time is like, look at this. If you look at his Instagram, it's like it looks like he's just having a good time. He's like, oh, look at right. my clothes. Right. You know, like there's not. It doesn't look like nasty and dirty. Yeah, and maybe you're right for that. Maybe it's just his personality, you know, and maybe maybe that just gets mis you know misperceived by some people. But I mean, look, he's not he ain't fucking around. Like, yeah, he's strong. I've seen him train. He's strong as fuck. And I'm sure Milos was putting him through hell. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't train with Milos unless you want to be pushed hard, because you know he's going to put you through the ringer. I don't think Milos would let him fuck around. Right. So I don't know. I'm really excited to see him come back. I I want to. Because I I'm like you know Jay Cutler said a long time ago like Regan has the potential to be Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. I actually fully agree with him. He just needs to fill that frame out. He's got such a big fucking frame. You guys have all been around him on per in person. He's got he's big. He's just a tall, wide fucking kid. Mm -hmm. And I think, mm -hmm. but that's but I also think that's what's taken him so long to realize his potential. He's got so much fucking real estate to fill out. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm excited for him to come back anyway though. Uh, do we know right. what show he's do, do we know what show he's doing? Oh, Ian figured it out. Italy. Oh. Italy, oh yeah. Italy. I do agree with you, Ian, though. I think if he did more uh North American shows, yeah, he would definitely get a little bit more <laughs> um more hype. Because like I, I noticed that, and that's honestly why I kind of stopped doing those shows. Like when I won the show in Spain or when I did Portugal, like it just wasn't the same. Like people just didn't care the same. Nobody mm -hmm. watches them, yeah. No, I'm like, I, I'd be better to just stick around here and win shows here, like, or, you know, or come second at a show here and instead of winning a show over there, you know, like, because at the end of the day, like, if you can't win almost any show, what the fuck are you going to do with the Olympia anyways? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I can't show up at Chicago or, or fucking Toronto or Vancouver and stand a pretty goddamn good chance of winning, well, I'm not going to do anything at the Olympia. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like at this point in my career, I ain't just trying to go to the Olympia to like, ooh, I'm happy to be here. I've been to fucking five already, you know? Yeah. 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 So, you know, at this point, like I I pick my shows based off what time works for me. And I really could care less who's there, what show it is. You should be able to be competitive at any one of these if you're going to want to get to the Olympia and be competitive, you know? Yeah. yeah. If you pick yeah. your shows too, too strategically, then you're in for a rude awakening when you get to the Olympia, you know? True. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Do you think do you think early on in your career, you know, you should be a little bit more selective about what shows you're choosing? Uh, I, I mean, I was, but I, I like you know when I went over and did Spain and Portugal and shows like that, like I was, but I don't think it did me. I think it did me a disservice. Yeah, you know, I, I think I would have been better to just keep doing the shows over here and standing next to better bodybuilders consistently. You know, I, I think there's nothing to be gained by going to the like. I don't think the just going to the Olympia Olympia for the experience if your goal is to be like a top tier guy eventually really does much. Like the stage experience of going and competing at Toronto or Vancouver or New York is the same stage experience as competing at the Olympia. Like look the yeah, pressure's a little on. different stuff like that, but it's still going on stage and competing. It's still the same. It's still competing, you know. Mm. So, I think it you know going to the Olympia just for the sake of going there, unless that's your goal, which if it is yeah. just to be there and be a guy that gets the Olympia and that's the end of it. You don't really care where you place. Um, but I think uh, you should always try and compete against the best people possible. If your end goal is to be the best bodybuilder you can be. I don't know. I don't know if I fully agree with that in the beginning stages of your career. That's what I was referring to or beginning. Yeah. Stages. What, what benefit do you have for just winning smaller shows to get to the Olympia? Well, I, I actually believe that you're a sum of your, the shows you've done so if you've won let's say let's say you won two european shows mm -hmm. and then you come to win you come to a, a let's say you come to do toronto or something or new york mm -hmm. the judges know you've won two pro shows i feel like you get a better look now that's just my own personal feeling i'm not saying that's a fact i'm not saying judges have told me that i'm just saying i think your record speaks for itself a little bit 
when you're getting call outs and things yeah, like that. Yeah, momentum sort of, sort of yeah, speak, coming momentum. into it. Yeah, but I think in, in the same breath, if you hadn't been winning European shows, but you'd gone to New York and California, but second, third, second, fourth, and like looking really good against really good bodybuilders, I think it's doing the exact same thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. especially if I you're improving that. from each show to show. Yeah. 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 Judges, right. judges want to see improvement, progression. They want you to take their feedback and implement it. Um, and, and like, look, do I think that there's anything wrong with selectively picking your shows to get to the Olympia? Absolutely not. Like do, if that's what you want to do, you want to get to the Olympia by any means necessary. That's great. I have no problem with that, but I'm just saying, I don't think in the long term of your career, it's doing you anything positive. No, no, I don't agree. Do I don't, I'm agreeing with you on the long term. All mm -hmm. I'm saying is I think if you're a new guy coming out and you decide to do, you know, the shows are a little bit more sparse than they used to be. Let's take a big show this year. Like if you decide to do Texas and it's your very first show ever and you take 10th, I don't think that's as positive for your career as doing the big man Spain and winning. It's so okay. confidence building for yourself. Maybe I agree with you there. Um, you know, but I also think there's something to be told. Like if, if your end goal is to be an Olympia top 10 bodybuilder, um, that to get up there and stand next to these guys, like the hunters and the Andrews and to see yeah. how do I stack up? Where do I need to improve? How do these guys pose? How do they operate backstage? You know, like, sure, I think that could be valuable too, you know? So I, I don't think it's... I'll give, you think an, I'll give you an example, you know, I'll give you an example. So uh, we ran into Carlos Thomas mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at the Arnold. Yeah. And I, I, I wasn't there. Ben ran into him and he asked him, like, what shows are you doing? And he said, Tampa, Texas. And Ben goes, oh, I don't know if that's a good idea for your first shows. Now, in that instance, I kind of agree. Because if Carlos was in shape and had done any of the four late previous shows, he probably could have won his debut. Okay, but one is debut for what? What do you mean for what? But like he gets the Olympia, and if he's not ready to beat any of those guys, if he'd ended up sixth in Tampa and Texas, what does it matter that he got to the Olympia? Well, think mentally, goal, though, a guy like Carlos's goal is to be a top Olympia competitor. Well, I will tell you this. Your career and your mental state is a sum of how you do. So it's like... If well, you... that's dependent. Look, for someone like you or I, you know, okay, having some I'll, positive I'll, things I'll... is going to be better. But do I think for someone that's maybe... You know, like that, that they're like, I just want to get out there and slug it with okay. the fucking boys. Like, Carlos is not, he's just like, fuck it. I want to stand next to these guys. I think that's awesome. Okay, you're right. It's dependent on the person. But I will say this. Taking second, third, second, third, second, third, fourth, repeatedly, time after time after time, starts to fucking wear on you. And it may curb your career faster than somebody who walks in and wins their pro debut. See, I disagree because for me, it was the best those situations happening to me were the best thing that happened in my career and that and what leveled me up. 2016, 15, when I started competing and I was coming fourth, third, second, fourth, fifth, sixth. And then I took, uh, and then from seeing all those shows, I'm like, wow, okay, I need to take a year off. I need to improve because these guys are bigger than me. They're bigger. They have better backs. They have better posing, blah, blah, blah. So I took that year off and then I came back. I started winning shows. Mm -hmm. So like getting on those stage with those guys is what gave me that, that information of like, okay, this is what I need, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I, need to, I need to, I need to level up. And then when I came back after 18 months off, 15 pounds heavier on stage, oh, now I want a show. I want a small show, which uh, like I'm saying, you know, that, that I don't think was beneficial per se, like me getting to that Olympia, it's whatever. Um, you know, like if I just done four other shows that year, I'm in second, third, whatever, that's fine. But I think that was that year that took to gain me that trajectory of, like, okay, this yeah, is what I, I don't, do. but I don't think you're putting any stock in the confidence that you build when you win a show that helps you keep that trajectory going at a, at a good pace. I don't think you're, yeah, I don't think you're giving that enough credence. Yeah, you might be right. I think you know, if like, a guy, I think if a guy, hard for me to look at in retrospect now, I think know? if a guy walks into the IFBB, look, this is one of the reasons Justin's picked Chicago. I mean, look at he, Samson. Look listen, at Samson. Justin. Samson's a prime example of what I'm saying. Samson was doing all the shows. He was placing like fucking garbage for years. I was beating yeah. him in shows. And now he just kept, he kept getting to the big shows. He kept slugging it out, doing his best, doing his best, doing better, improving, improving, improving. And now the guy's going to win the goddamn Olympics. I will, I will tell you though, there's not a lot of guys with Samson, Samson's result. But those are the kind of guys that it takes to win the fucking Olympics. Yeah, and I think I'm it depends not, on the individual. I, listen, I'm in no way saying that your methodology doesn't make sense. If you have yeah. the, if you have the mental strength to yeah. get beaten and come back stronger, then God bless you. You're the fucking shit. But I think, I think like, it's look, like, I, I, I think I it's like, them. wait, I'll give you an example. I think it's like a boxer, right? So they take a boxer, they break them down and they let them fight guys that are shit to build their confidence. So they can mm -hmm. keep on putting him with better and better and better guys. Okay. Sure. That's kind of the methodology I'm talking about. So you take yeah, a bodybuilder. 
So like, I'll take Justin for I example. agree with that, but on the flip side of that, I think there's a big difference between going at someone that's way better than you because getting knocked the fuck out does a lot more negative for your career than losing a bodybuilding show. When a guy gets knocked out, has a serious knockout in boxing, that can change your trajectory of your career entirely. Not, I don't think losing a bodybuilding show has the same impact. It depends. Because like, Let's say, let's say Justin for you know how it is. It's the boxing. same, it's the same idea, idea though. Building confidence is basically, I if think you take, if at. you take, if you take Justin, for example, right. And he does Texas first and he, but no matter how good he is, as an example, and he takes 10th, he's not going to retire. He's, but he's like, oh fuck, man. I just took 10th. Where as he does be like, yo, I took 10th. I need to level the fuck up. Right. And he will. But if he does Chicago and he fucking wins his pro debut, even if it was only beating one or two guys, he's still now on a high going into the next year. Even if he takes 15th at the Olympia. How do you guys feel about that? Like, like say you're a guy who wins this, you win your debut pro show and you go to the Olympia. What Do you think that like riding, like, so say you go to the Olympia and you come, whatever, dead last. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So you, instead of riding that high of that win of a pro show and then, building that momentum into next year, you go and you're let down. Like, there's no matter what happens, you're going to be let down. This is the point I'm saying, though, with going to the yeah. Olympia before you're ready. Like, if you... Yeah, win, that's what I mean. Like, is there... I don't... I wouldn't... I've never had the pleasure of doing that, but I would... And I... It's hard to say because I'm not in the person's shoes because maybe I'd be so jacked up I just want to go. But I don't see how it benefits them anyway because, like, if you know that you're not going to do well, why not take that time that now you're prepping for an Olympia show that you know you're not going to do very well at? I when think you could be growing again yes. and like dedicating, right? I think I think coming fourth or fifth at like shows like New York is going to do more or or less negative than going to the Olympian coming fucking dead last and being yeah, like, but now, but now I'm you're not con- even close but, to the level of these guys. Ian, you know? Now you're contradicting yourself. Why? Because you're saying being am- being amongst the best and watching them backstage and watching them get on stage. Yeah, but I'm saying with the Olympia, I'm saying with the Olympia, I'm saying. I don't think with that and coming that low in a show is going to be like, I'm agreeing with Mike in this case. I'm saying yeah, with but- the shows, I'm, I'm talking about picking easier shows to get to the Olympia. But once you're at the Olympia, which is the end goal of it all, yeah. if that's the end goal, like there's nothing beyond the Olympia. Yeah, it's like if you win, if you win like, like there without being competitive. Like Chicago, right? If you win like Chicago this year and then you, so you win it and everyone's like, holy fuck, like say it's Justin. Justin's the fucking next, he's fucking crazy. He won that and he just rides that into next season then he goes and does like a texas and wins that why. texas right i, I, I agree with what you're saying this is why i don't agree mm. uh i did that three times yeah. so I, I qualified for four olympias and i didn't go to three because i was like oh, i just i want to sh-. one of the times i was like oh, i just won two shows i'm gonna wait i'm gonna go next year and then like it, it just this is actually, I mean, I, in, it's in the moment, it's, I don't think, I think it'd be hard to do. Like, I, I admit, it's probably really hard to do. Right, you know, you know it's I'm funny. Speaking about this, I'm speaking of guys with their end goal of being like a top five Mr. Olympia guy. Yeah. Like, if mm-hmm. someone that just wants to be a fucking. But I'm know, speaking of, I'm speaking of strictly beginners. I'm not talking about after your first year. I'm take, I'm saying when it's your, like, I remember, um, what's that kid's name? Cody Montgomery. Yeah. yeah. Montgomery, yeah. His first show was an Arnold. And yeah. I think, I think he took, second or third last or, or last i don't remember sure. that's not a good decision no i that's agree a, that's an immediate punch in the face you're like fuck i just took last at my first yeah, show but there's a difference between arnold's and olympias and like the new york pros i don't think if you're a, a reasonable bodybuilder that's going to be competitive i think coming fourth fifth sixth at a, at a show like that and seeing how you stack up and gaining that intel is is better than just going and getting your fucking you know going to the olympia or the arnold and getting like your soul crush i'm, I'm so i my, understand there's a difference you know so my i i my ultimate look we'll just agree to disagree but my ultimate idea is if i'm going to test myself i'd rather test myself at the olympia i don't care about testing myself in new york if i i want to get okay to the well olympia, then maybe maybe i retract what i'm saying about the olympia and i'm just saying in terms of the shows you're picking so yeah. i think you know if you want to pick shows don't pick shows off what you think will be easiest to win just pick shows that are conducive to your timing and that are good for you location wise, and don't worry about how hard or easy they are to win. Yeah, because that is not going to do you any justice when it gets to the Olympia. Maybe that's what right. I'm saying. I so just I, said, I, I, maybe I'm not saying forgo the Olympia or whatever. You know, sure, and I am contradicting myself in a sense because I did say there is intel to be gained by being around these level yeah. of bodybuilders. So yeah. I think that would be good still to do. Um, but you you also do have to be prepared to maybe have a little bit of a fucking 
holy shit, I'm going to get smoked here. Well, I think, I think my train of thought only comes from my own perspective because of my own experience. So it's a little bit obviously skewed, but I I'm only saying that because I skipped three Olympias and I think I probably would have been a better bodybuilder had I gone, even if I didn't place in the top 10, See just where, to just to push myself to see where I would have been. Where I agree with Mike, though, in a sense, is that 2018, I won Spain, which was a smaller show. I went to the Olympia that year. I came 14th. Yeah. But then 2019 year, I didn't even qualify for the Olympia. Now, I think if that time after that show, after I won Spain, if I'd be like, all right, I won this show, but I'm not quite ready for the Olympia yet. I take that whole time. I think I could have won a show in 2019. So yeah. it does kind of go both ways. That time could have been better a lot of becoming... 14th at the Olympia, which is like, what is that doing for me? It's like, it's a cool experience. And do I regret it? No, but did it do anything positive for my career? Not really. It just uh, seems but- like guys that are coming up and like, maybe they're doing those liver shows. Like you're also maybe not in a financial spot mm-hmm. where you should be like, maybe you should like take that high and gear down and get ready for another season. Yeah, as opposed yeah. to like you're committing another prep. That's time, money, everything, yeah. energy into something that's not going to necessarily even have a chance of paying off. Yeah. And then like, you get to say, I went to the Olympia, which is like, it's an awesome thing to be able to say that. Yeah, it's like, if you know you're good, you know, you can come back next year and fucking yeah. blow the doors. Yeah. Off place, yeah. Right? yeah but but I, but I, but I, oh, sorry. Sorry. One thing. Look at the same light as if like a guy was doing your show. And we had this conversation with Michael Lawn talk, you know, where like, okay, you came third, fourth, whatever at this show. And you can go to the Olympia or to nationals in this case, but maybe that's not the best decision. Yeah. Well, and I think I the think time could be better lauded. I don't think the Olympia is like more important just because it's the Olympia, you know? You gotta you gotta remember something. I'm speaking from a retired bodybuilder's perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so your perspective so is different. My, my perspective yeah, of course you wish you had gone to more Olympias. I understand. I my, agree. My perspective is I would have been much more proud of my career saying I did four Olympias, even if they were even if I was in the fifteenth. Sure. I would have been Maybe my perspective's difference because I've done five Olympians. Yeah. yeah, that's right. why right. we have a different yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. Let's move on. Um I got a question from an I want to just touch on this real quick. So this fan messaged me and he said, he's like, I got something personal I want to ask you. Do you mind if I ask you? I'm like, sure, go ahead. So he says, I'm with this girl. I haven't been with her long. And I glanced over at a girl, and then she said that I'm always looking at other girls, and we got in a fight, and then she dumped me. She dumped she go, and she, yeah. So he goes, he goes, what do you, you at least I, get the other girl's number? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what do you, he goes, what do you think I should do? Let her go. And I, and I said, well, tell me the truth. Did you glance or did you stare? Yeah. And he goes, no, man, I swear. I just glanced. I didn't stare, blah, blah. blah. I'm like, well, I'm like, you probably dodged a bullet. I'm like, yeah. look, I'm like, if you, if she's if that you, bad off yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, if you glanced and you had to have a conversation about it, that's one thing. If you glanced and you broke up, I'm like, you're probably fucking better off. <laughs> yeah, she sounds like a psycho. You guys no, all I mean, like now you're now you're trying to like like mind police people. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Look, I can't even I have to be like averting my gaze at all times. Right. Yeah. Girlfriend might dump me. Like, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every time there's a woman around, you have to look at the floor. I'm surprised <laughs> that she dumped him over that. Though. I, oh dated, I dated a girl once. I mean we were, listen to this. We're, I dated a girl once. We go to the mall, she's shopping for fucking clothes. I'm like, okay, I'll go with you, whatever. So we're shopping for clothes and she's, we're in there for fucking like, it felt like half an hour. I'm like, I'm dead. I'm so tired. I'm literally, I'm literally like, I got my (laughs) arms up on one of the clothing racks and I'm literally just like staring off into the distance. I'm not staring at anybody. I'm just staring off into the distance. I'm half asleep. She comes out of the fucking change room and she's like, what are you staring at? Like, Like, what? Like, what are you staring at? You staring at that girl over there? I'm like, honestly, I'm in a fucking daze because we've been here for half an hour. <laughs> my blood sugar is dropping. <laughs> I'm <laughs> gazing, gazing into my future and not liking what I see. <laughs> that kind of shit drives me nuts because all that does is you end up walking on fucking eggshells. Yeah. Uh, it's the that's worst not, that's not a long term plan. You can't live life like that. Like, that's a, a drive yourself fucking insane over a long period. It's an and, then, and then you end up creating little tiny lies all the time because you're trying to not upset them. So it's yeah. like, oh, I would never do that. I would never look at this. I would never yeah. like yeah. where if you're just being secure and I'm like me and Melissa can see a girl in public and she, and say she's we can both agree she's attractive or yeah. a guy yeah. in public. She can notice he's attractive and I can be like, fuck, yeah, it's a good looking dude. You know, like yeah. it's not yeah. like going to go suck his dick or I'm going to go fuck this girl it's like you might you might go suck his dick well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you, can, you can appreciate people and without being like a fucking freak right it. yeah it's very unattractive when someone's that insecure well, that's, that that's the other thing paul like that's what we should for all the women watching 
it's you're fucking not, crazy you're not, you're not you're not yeah. fucking helping your cause no. by trying to play fucking de- de- fucking detective you're also not you're also not controlling or stopping anything no you're not changing or doing anything at all. You know, I told yeah. my wife. What do you, you think? To... What do you think you're preventing? Do you think your boyfriend looking at this girl all of a sudden inserts his dick in her vagina? Like, right. it's it not an, doing anything. Like, an know, insecure what, what mind, think, though. What do you think you're stopping here? You know. You know, yeah. I told I told my wife one time. I said, you know, if I want to cheat on you, I can. Exactly. Like you can't. Like you'll never find out. I can yes. cheat on you tomorrow, yeah. and you'll never fucking know. Exactly. Obviously, it didn't go over well because a little bit too. But, well, <laughs> too you might, should have maybe put that a little different, Fred. Oh, well, it was pretty, <laughs> sounds, sounds pretty sensitive true, to like, me. You need to go, have this trust that it's like I'm. I could never know, but I believe that you won't. You know, that's that's right. what I. Yeah. That's kind of what I was getting at. Is I'm like, look, yeah. you just have to fucking trust me. Like you're not gonna yeah. find out. Like yeah. just and, and vice versa. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, I think Paul touched on the most important thing. That shit. It's so unsexy and unattractive Ugh. and like it's it's just brutal, man. It's like yeah. there's nothing more attractive than a confident girl. For there's sure. Nothing. Even if she's not a, a dime, even if she's not a 10 out of 10, let's say she's a six, mm-hmm. but she's super fucking confident, it makes mm-hmm. her like an eight or nine. Not yeah. arrogant, but but confident. Not arrogant. Big difference. Not, no, no, no. Not like I'm the shit. Secure. Yeah, fucking, yeah. Secure. Yeah. Yeah. Secure. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, okay. Best pay, best way to repay your girlfriend after a twenty week prep. I bought my wife a purse. Oh, she wanted this Louis Vuitton purse, so I took her out and bought her Louis Vuitton purse. I was like, "Thank you for putting up with my shit." <laughs> what are you laughing at? Hey, get her Michael Kors, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really nice to be around when I'm prepping, Mike. She deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I went and got her Hermes bag. <laughs> it was custom made. <laughs> I'm probably more pleasant to be around during prep, so I don't really like have like an apology to make up for. You know. You know what? You don't get worse. Well, yeah, you're the same pretty much all year round. Yeah, I right. actually, I think I'm probably better for Melissa during prep because I'm like a lot more energetic and like active and like i want to like if she wants to go like do something i'm always like down to do whatever i want to move around do stuff like I'm, yeah. i have a lot more energy when i'm eating less food so yeah, uh, yeah. and I, I don't like get in a bad mood or like get like too like tired unless we're like we're talking like a week or two out but yeah, the rest yeah, yeah. of the 10 12 14 weeks like i feel great in prep yeah yeah i'm i owe my wife for years and years of hell yeah um what amount of diet soda artificial sweeteners is acceptable in a prep? Ugh, Ian, sucks. you want to touch on this? I I used to put sweetener on everything, so I can't say shit. Yeah, I, I mean, to... look, I think this is this is where you need to look at it, Mike. Why is there your camera so? I don't easy? know. I don't know. They just all of a sudden did that. I tried to fix it. I made and I made it fucking way worse. <laughs> just wipe wipe it with something. I'm trying to find something. I think it, the rule of thumb with this kind of stuff is if you're getting continual and progressive fat loss, then drink as much as you're comfortable or want to drink. If you're drinking yeah. six diet pops a day and you're still getting in shape, then I think there's no problem. But I think if you're starting to reach, you're starting to really push the calories low and the cardio high, there you go, that's better. Um, and and I think that something like the artificial sweeteners or the diet pops would probably be one of the first things to go or like the condiments or things that you might be going like a little in excess um other than that unless it's causing you digestive issues like i don't really see it's like a big deal i think you should probably cut those stuff like the last week or so yeah just to like minimize inflammation from mm-hmm. any of the sweeteners and make sure your digestion is like 100 percent. but for the rest of prep as long as you're still getting in shape it really doesn't fucking matter like as long I, as you're in shape by a week out it literally doesn't matter how you got there you know the only the only addition i would make to that is if you're replacing because i knew one guy i coached was replacing water with diet coke so well, yeah. I'm like if you're not if yeah, you're not nice. getting <laughs> not not, not nice. all his not all his water, but he's literally <laughs> drinking like a two liter a day. Okay, but uh, did he still look good? Yeah, but I just think you need to be hydrated, man. Well, Coke's yeah, well, I mean, if, 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 what, water. what if he was drinking two liters of Diet Coke on top of his whatever prescribed Fine. six or eight Fine. liters of pure water a day? Doesn't sound That's right. okay. Yeah, I mean, like, look, I don't really I minimize those things as much as I possibly can in prep, but I've also done preps when I worked with like Greg Doucette when I was like Every fucking thing I ate was made with some sweetened yeah, concoction, and I was peeled out of my goddamn mind. So I did it. Yeah, to say I did. that it doesn't, it's going to make you worse, I don't think it's true. I think the biggest thing you're going to get is, especially with bigger guys where there's a lot of food intake, um, is the digestive distress yeah. from it. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have a guy that's eating a lot of food and taking especially like, you know, heavy oral steroids, and then you put in a bunch of fucking sweeteners, I think that's just like a 
a you know concoction to fuck your stomach up. Yeah. Um, but if you're not having any issues with it, I think keep it in till a week or two out. Other than that, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, I agree. I've I've done preps where I drank Crystal Light the whole fucking way through, so in, I'm all, too. in all my I'm water, too. and I've done. Man, the preps I won where I won shows with John, I was doing cream of rice every meal, and every cream of rice had two or sweetener. three packets of sweetener in it. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. Or oatmeal, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've done it both ways, and I don't find, like, un- until the last week, if you, you know, cut it, I think it really makes no difference. As long as body fat is still coming off, it doesn't matter, you know? Can each one of you tell us about an off season where you pushed the food extra hard and got that to that new level every off season? Every off season. <laughs> no, it's true. I when you're growing, you have like, to. Like when I went from 200 pounds when I started to 300 pounds on a regular basis, I had to push food every fucking off season to break those barriers till I got to 300. Then when I got to 300, I'm like, okay, I'm not really going to get much bigger, so I was able to stay in between 290 and 300. And my off seasons weren't about pushing food anymore; they were more about refining. Yeah, but. You- but when you're trying to grow, that's why I, that's, I think this is why this is, I think where people misconstrue what I mean when I say you have to eat big to get big, I'm not saying you have to get fat, but there is a period of uncomfortability where you're like, I was two thirty last year. I want to be two forty this year. The only way to fucking do that is to eat more, which is uncomfortable. Yeah. The only yeah, guy who makes me kind of, I agree with you in most because, like, look, I've pushed off season, been 300 pounds and eaten crazy tons of food. Is Hunter. Hunter never gets that heavy. He never gets that out of shape. His food intake is always pretty low and he's progressively improved, like, pretty fucking continual every year. Like, he's obviously eating in a surplus, but it's a very minimal one. He stays very conditioned. Uh, he's doing like stair mill all year round and he doesn't push the food too crazy. And he's been one of the most progressive bodybuilders I think there is right now. Okay. So to my, to my knowledge, he doesn't do stair mill all year round and he's eaten more food this off season and he's made a sure. dramatic, dramatic change. More food, but his body fat, like he's still not for a guy that's competing at like the same weight as me or some other guys, he's staying 20 pounds lighter. But I think your body fat level is going to be genetic, uh, it has a genetic component. I agree with that. Yeah, right? I agree. So, but I'm saying the food content that you take in, I'm not saying you got to eat pizza, McDonald's, and all that. I'm saying even if you're eating chicken, rice, steak, fucking potato, if you were eating 4,000 calories last year and it got you to 230 pounds, that 4,000 calories again this year is not going to get you to 240 or 50 pounds. 100% agree. Yeah. That's all yeah. I'm trying to say. So there's a period of uncomfortable because now your stomach is used to... It's, 40... new. it's new. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Your stomach is used to 4,000 calories. Well, if I want to put on that extra 10 or 20 pounds, I got to go to 45 yeah. or, or five. And now you're like, oh, fuck, my stomach hurts. Yeah. But you kind of have to go through that. Like, I don't... You got to condition I, your metabolism. Unless, unless, you're, unless you're a genetic anomaly. I don't really know anybody who hasn't gone through that. Like, even Samson. I watch yeah. Samson eat when he comes when he comes to my house and stays for a few days. The guy's fucking uncomfortable all you like all the, time. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, but, all bodybuilders off seasons are uncomfortable. And but, I'm sure even like someone like Hunter, for him, that was an uncomfortable level yeah. of food because he hadn't pushed it that hard before. But I'm just saying the level of food he's eating compared to some other guys that are that size or the amount of body fat he's gaining is, is definitely lower. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at Samson, for example, he's eating more food or the same as last year now, but he's grown into the weight more. Sure. So mm-hmm. yeah, you can, but we're also talking about a guy who's 36 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm talking more about like when I see like a Sam Sulek and he's like 21. Yeah. I think he just said this in one of his fucking videos two days ago. I was watching it. He's like, Oh, I got a lot more food to eat. going to be uncomfortable. It's like, you're yep. always uncomfortable. And I'm like, fuck, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I'm like because from that age, from twenty to twenty five, especially you're twenty foot twenty to thirty, where you're constantly growing every year, that food constantly gets pushed up. Yeah, yeah, and that's the time to do it. Get to, get to yeah. be our age, and uh, you start getting heartburn and digestion. You know, <laughs> it's, uh... diverticulitis. <laughs> oh yeah, it's all kinds of pile <laughs> foot, all kinds of problems. Gout. Anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, how often does Mike see people using his techniques and just think, what the fuck? On the flip side, how often does he see people doing doing them and doing them well? Uh, what the fuck happens a lot more than doing them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I trained, not- a guy the other, I trained a guy the other day. Him and his girlfriend drove, I forget where they drove up from in the States. I think it was like Michigan or something, but 
this kid's movement i'm not a kid he's a man he had his back movement was like for like people i, I was like whoa like i literally had to like move a chin his chin position one is that where you and, see like, the biggest have him, have him arch a little bit like literally his movement was fucking fantastic and i told him like this is the best i've ever seen of someone who just like walked off the street you're gonna be like that like, when you work with me you're gonna feel that way yeah, hyper responder. <laughs> outside the hyper responder space. <laughs> um, uh, this is actually interesting. Is politics aside, being super inclusive. Thoughts on the transgenders in last week's hard? Did you guys see the transgender guy that did the woman's class? No. Is that really a dude? I thought that was a joke. I've had that. We've had that happen before in Ontario. No, no. This is a no, no. This is we haven't. This is a man. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. A transgender female. No, you just say man. Transitioned or non? Born as a man, transitioned to a woman, competing in a woman's class. Completed the transition? I don't fucking know if he had a dick or not, man. We have had that in Ontario, though. Yes, we've had someone who's completed the transition. Okay, anyways, this person did women's physique, but he was, but she previously was a man. Yeah, I, I absolutely, completely, unequivocally disagree with this in every form of sports ever. I don't know. This is, this is there's <laughs> there's no there's literally zero argument yeah. you could ever make for a natural born male competing against females. No matter how early they transition, it is not the same, and it will never be the same. And it's fucking ridiculous. And anyone that thinks it is is fucking stupid. Okay, are we good? Yeah. Everybody agree? <laughs> <laughs> he said um, it. <laughs> the, 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 uh, look, and any any woman at a high level of sport is going to agree with this. Like sure. it's only the people that don't play high level sports that sure. think this bullshit. Like you've yeah. seen interviews with like the Williams sisters where yeah. they're like, "Yo, we would get fucked up by these dudes. There's not a chance." And you're talking about one with a lower level of like, you know, no contact and no like, you know, like it's completely different than playing football or hockey or you know, right. you go, go put a man, go put fucking go put like Chera in women's hockey and see what happens. You know what I mean? Or go put Mike Tyson <laughs> you know, put eight, yeah. in, in fucking in women in boxing. Like right. you can't. I you think, know, we're in I track think, and field. It's a big yeah. thing. Track and field, the IWF made this like a hard rule. Now they're like, absolutely, we are not into this. Yeah. Because in track, it makes like this is where you're breaking down athletics to like it's bare bones. Yeah. Running fast, yeah. jumping high, throwing things. And when you break it down like that, men and women are not even close to equal. Like, yeah. it's not even in the same ballpark. The fastest sure. woman in the world is, like, a fast high school guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I ran yeah. I ran with guys in Ontario that ran the same times that women will win the fucking Olympics with. You know, yeah. like, it's not even in the same ballpark, you know? How do, how do, you, how do you feel about that one uh, runner? Um, I, think, I, think, I think South African, I believe. Um, that it's a female that has uh, unnaturally high. Pastor Semenya? Yeah, she's been. Uh, yes. She's been, been banned now, though. Yeah. But she's appealing. Yeah, but it's she hasn't competed in like fucking four years now. Okay, but I did read that they believe she'll win her appeal eventually. <laughs> wait, guys, please. Okay, wait, we covered this. I got to read. <laughs> I just asked you how you thought about that. No, 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 that I got. I got. I got to read this. Here. I got to <laughs> yeah. read this. Here. So, question: Let's play fuck Mary kill. Beyonce, Halle Berry, and Cardi B. Lee kill Priest. Cardi Lee, B. Lee, Lee, Lee I Priest. Kill Cardi B. Lee Priest answers. Masturbate, marry myself, and kill all three. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best answer. Right? <laughs> uh, question for all the married bros. What's the best gift you've gotten your wife? She loved beyond words, but you thought wasn't good enough. Man, well, everything. I have the opposite of that. I, I, got a gift, I got a gift that I thought was the best gift ever that we returned. What was it? <laughs> so there was a time like Melissa started getting into like drinking coffee. Like she was like not really a coffee drinker and then started like really liking like being a daily coffee drinker, liking good coffee. So then I don't know, this must have been like two or three years ago. I bought her like the fanciest like commercial Breville, like fucking $5,000 coffee maker I could find. Yeah. yeah like yeah. automated computer thing on it fucking makes you can save your favorites and like yeah. make a completely custom thing. And I get this home and she was like, I, the second she opened, I was so excited to give it to her. I was like, <laughs> you know, and when she opened it, like right away, I could tell, like, I fucking missed the mark yeah. on this one, you know. Like, yeah. and then she was like, "How much did this cost?" And I was like, well, "I don't want to fucking tell oh, you that." No, that's and she's like, one. she's like, "This was really expensive," and like, I don't think I like it that much. And I was like, well, fuck <laughs> "Good for telling me." So we returned it. But that's but that's actually nice because then you're like, you know what? You can return it and buy whatever the fuck you actually want. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's she. Better. 
she returned it and bought a uh, Eve Sailor all bag. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm one step ahead of you. Yeah. I bought. I went. I bought the expensive purse. Well, I know now. And brought, yeah. <laughs> I just ask, "What do you want?" And I'm like, yeah. "Okay, get that instantly." Yeah, that, that's what I do now. <laughs> Let's take the guess out of it. When that's I first met my wife, I bought her. Uh, it was like our first Christmas or something together. So I want to get her something nice. So remember our buddy Al, who had yeah. So I went shopping with Al because, you know, I think I'd been a bachelor for a long time. So I didn't know what to get a woman. So I asked Al to come with me. And Al at the time was married to a Ukrainian uh, dancer. Yeah. Um, so he he had me pick out this. Remember that line, Juicy Couture, I think it was called? Yeah. It was like really tacky. Ju- like, juicy on the ass. Yes, yeah. yes. So I got her this. <laughs> She's like, what am I, a fucking stripper? What the fuck? Yeah, I exactly. I gave. I could just tell the look on her face. Dude, and, yeah. I know your wife. I could have told you that was a horrible idea. Yeah, this is early yeah, that's, on. This that's is like our first bad. year together. Can I tell you what the worst gift I ever got for my uh, birthday once? I had to, I, nothing, you know, I like, nothing. Nothing. Well, yeah, but this is one even worse. <laughs> this, this one I would have rather had nothing. Um, I, got, I remember I got this particular girlfriend a nice gift for her birthday too, and then my birthday comes around, and I liked eagles. But I don't want a fucking statue eagle for my birthday though. My birthday, <laughs> she gets me a statue of an eagle. Yeah, I like. Yeah, bring, how, at least bring how, a how real bald eagle to the house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me hold that fucking like the. Oh my God. <laughs> I like eagles, but I don't want. I don't want a fucking eagle for my birthday. <laughs> Wait a minute. What size was this eagle? It was like a thing that you put on your like a mantle or something. You know what I mean? Like, like it, was, it was like this big. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> what am I going to do with that? Did you tell her I don't want it? No, I, I pretended like I liked it, but I it got when the well, garbage. she's going to fucking know now. I'm going to send she her. She don't watch this. I'm sure she don't watch this. I'm going to send her that clip. This is an old girlfriend. This is my, this is my wife. <laughs> oh, I thought it was your wife. Okay. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, I, I only want to cover this for two minutes. Ian, Ian I'm, do you have to go or are you good? We're good. Okay, I'm going to cover this for just, I don't want to sit on this for a long time. Uh, And Lee Priest answered this one as well. We should just have Lee on the show because he gets <laughs> Uh, what's your take on reverse dieting? I know Fuad thinks you should get back to 10, 15% body fat ASAP, three or four weeks. And after you get there, how do you know you should increase calories to a surplus? Lee Priest answers, reverse dieting, LOL, Jesus, fuck me sideways. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love Lee. <laughs> oh, he's the best. <laughs> I also hate the term reverse dieting. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> No, okay. So I don't necessarily think you should get to 15% right away. What I said was, I think people waste too much time trying to stay too lean for too long. You should put the weight back on, maybe not in three or four weeks, but like, I know guys who are reverse dieting for like eight fucking weeks. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, it's just kind of like you're wasting time. Yeah. This is so hard because like, I find answering these kind of questions without context of future plans very difficult. Yeah. You know, like it's like, okay, well, what do you are you competing in a year? Are you competing yeah. in six months? Yeah. Are you competing in three months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, well, also, like, like, what's your personality type? Are you just gonna go off the fucking rails? And do we yeah. need to keep you like do we need to keep you on some type of plan? By the way, are I'm you gonna, gonna be like help. smart enough? I hope he watches this. I'm gonna call him out here. I had a client, the Justin Jansen, my buddy, he competed at <laughs> he's got he's got second, right? Or third. He's got third in the heavyweights. And he messaged me this morning, and he was up fucking 22 pounds in stage. <laughs> That's Amazing. not okay, Justin. Good man, good man. <laughs> nah, Justin. Push for 30, buddy. <laughs> he went to Boston, drove from Vancouver. They went down to Seattle so they could go to fucking Cheesecake Factory, and the guy just ate his goddamn face off. <laughs> wait, a minute. I, I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. His still look good, so I, like, I, didn't, I don't want to get mad at him, but like, that's way too much. Don't do that. <laughs> okay wait i actually want to touch on the second part of that question which was how do you know if you've made progress if you put on the weight all all at once uh i don't measure my i never measured my progress in the off season solely on weight because one of the things and whether whether you agree with this or not is not relevant because chad and john both used to have me just get back to my weight like if i would finish a show and i was 250 on stage or 240 on stage you'd be like get back to 280 get back to 290 not right away, but get back there. So I would get back there and then we would measure progress by pumps in the gym, how I looked in the mirror strength. And there's so many other <laughs> metrics that go along with, it's not just weight. Like just cause you put on two pounds a week. Doesn't mean you're putting on two pounds of muscle a week. Well, you can, you so, can fucking slam a bunch of insulin and fucking be 350 pounds well, and then cut the insulin out and beat fucking 305. Like it's well, not look, it, Well, look, it's just as simple as this. If you're reverse dieting and your goal is to put on two pounds a week, 
you're not putting on two pounds a week of muscle. You'd be lucky if you put on in a perfect world, you'd be lucky if you put on two pounds of muscle tissue a month. Uh, yeah. You'd so, be real. So your two pounds a week is still not, doesn't mean you're gaining lean muscle tissue. Right. You're just, you're just gaining weight slower than I am and yeah. wasting time. Yeah. So I, I wonder like for the only, sorry, Paul, the only one more thing, the only thing I'll say about reverse dieting is <coughs> it's, it's probably much healthier. That's the only yeah. thing I will say. Yeah. I think, I think you shouldn't, I think you should get back to a place, not, not as fast as possible, but quickly get back to a place where your training performance is at 100% optimal. Yeah. So I think obviously when you're in contest shape at 250, let's say for myself or 260, my training performance is not the same as it is at 280, but my yeah. training performance actually gets worse when I'm 305. Yeah. So I think yeah. you need to get back to where your training performance is at a hundred percent optimized. And then that is your baseline to now build into an off season, you know? Yeah. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry, you're gonna say I, I can see reverse dieting be more applicable for someone, for example, who's in a classic physique category and he's right already at his limit, and he's got to yeah. be careful in the off season. You know? Yeah, we're talking uh, about like we're talking about body. Girl, like, open you know bodybuilding. I, mean? I, I don't think you need to be that. I'm you know? I'm re I'm referring to in a sense of a open bodybuilder who's trying to put on as much mass as possible. Are yeah, we, the, I, I agree with you guys. Rebound in bodybuilding. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree with you guys. Then just get the back to your training weight. Fucking rebound. <laughs> the, nice, the, the thing about what Ian said is, I finally settled because people always say, "How fat do you get? How lean do you supposed to stay?" Blah blah blah. I finally settled in a place after talking to John Jewett on one of my podcasts, I don't know, a year ago. John said it the best. Whether you're 10% or 15%, wherever, wherever you, your training performance is best. Ian won't let me finish a sentence. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I said it first. You're just repeating. Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> repeating. No, no, I'm repeating what Ian said. That's, But I got that from John Jewett, and that's kind of where I've settled on my position as well, is like if you perform best when you're a little heavier, then get a little heavier. If you perform best yeah. and lighter, then get lighter. And John yes. just won a, a show, didn't he? Yeah, congratulations, to John. Won Atlanta. It was Atlanta. It looked amazing. In Atlanta. I it looked, yeah, yeah, it looked really good. Um, but yeah, like I've been up to 305, 308 in the off season. And I've also, you know, like this past off season where I was only like 285. And my training performance is so much better. And like, I'm obviously, that's not 20 pounds of muscle difference. That's just water and glycogen and okay. all these things that I'm just going to strip off real quick when I come down anyways. Yeah. But my training performance in terms of my you know, ability to push sets far, my, you know, recovery between sets, my appetite, my insulin sensitivity started to go kind of way of the dodo bird when I got too heavy. So over time, you will find that, like you said, find that spot, or like John said, where your training is at as optimized as it can get. And then any more than that, it's negative feedback, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, will Paul blows on guest pose at your show next year? <laughs> Are you guest posing in Detroit? No, I'm not guess posing in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> would, would, would that be would that be competing in Detroit? Like I'm not pro or No, that. you're gonna guess pose. No, no, you, you're above the you get the guest pose. Oh, because I'm a professional you're a judge. Because you're a promoter. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. I thank you for the yeah, no, I don't I don't think I'll be putting this on uh, any stage. <laughs> okay. We'll just answer this one really quickly just because I, I want people to know. If prep time if prep time wasn't an issue, do you think the guys on the Olympia stage could get in show shape with testosterone only? Course. I'm sorry. Say it again, Fred. If prep time wasn't an issue, do you think the guys on the Olympia stage could get in show shape with testosterone only? Well, I don't think I don't think the shape. compounds honestly would affect the kind of condition most of us would get in. I think you would just see Size. guys that would be like not quite as hard looking, and I don't full. think anyone would be as big, you know, yeah, and full. But I mean, well, only testosterone. Can I take fucking three grams of testosterone my whole prep? You know what I mean? Like if I could take the same total milligrams of drugs. I could probably hold the same amount, cut my test at fucking two weeks out. You yeah. could probably look 95% the same, to be honest. You know, I think uh, the reason I want to read this is for people who think drugs do all the work. It's like, yes, drugs help, but you can get shredded with just food. So yeah. well, we yes. talked about before, if we had, like some of the natural guys who get shredded, it's a different yeah, look. And sometimes us. it's more impressive. Well, yes. look at Bob, Bob Water. Is it Bob Waterhouse? Yeah. Bob Waterhouse just did. Uh, and I, I, I don't. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he's natural anymore. But because he, he was Vancouver, he was awesome. But because he was natural for so many fucking years, his lines are so clean. The line I gotta find this fucking photo. It, I just thought his like the striations and the way his physique looked. Yeah, he looked really good. Fucking incredible. Yeah, it's a different look. It's it's um it's Here not it as full obviously as someone check, who's check check this out. Are you watching? Yeah. This? Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's look at this fucking. Look. Yeah. Look at the fucking lines. It's, it's the kind of look. like muscularity we had when we were like young and fresh, you know? Yeah. 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 Look at that. Very it's, clean it's, look. Yeah. It's all really clean and like 
it almost looks like a natural bodybuilder because he's yeah. pretty, pretty much natural for most of his career. If not look at all. all look at like his face all caved in. It is. He's look at this. Look at this. Yeah. This is a guy who knows how to get shredded without yep. drugs. Look at the fucking look at how thin the skin is right here. And he was getting that condition when he was natural, probably still. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I did a really if anybody wants to watch it, I did a really good podcast with him about uh the differences of getting shredded naturally versus not naturally and just being a bodybuilder as a natural guy and not natural. Look at this. Look at this. Where did he finish? Did he finish third? Uh top three. Oh, this is a prediction. Sorry. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. But that's really fucking impressive, man. Mm -hmm. Good for him. Uh, okay. We'll do a couple more. Or Ian go. What's that? Ian's gone. Ian left. Oh, he left without saying bye. bye. Okay. Oh. Well, that <laughs> that's that's kind of. I think he was trying to find a signal. Thought he's yeah. moving around so much. Uh, okay, Mike, do you got to go, or you got time for one or two more? I got time for one more. All right, Ian's back. Are you back? I thought you just didn't yeah. Like so it. when Ian comes back, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> My laptop died. I don't know. I didn't even fucking. Um. How do I change it to gallery view again? Swipe. Are you on the phone? Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh okay. Who on the podcast is guilty of taking the most anadrol in their career? Mike, Who Mike, Mike for sure, Mike. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't take it. You mean nosebleeds all the time? I couldn't eat. <laughs> really? Yeah, it would give me gut rot like crazy. I, <laughs> like, I, I couldn't good. literally eat. See, I was good with it until like 2008, and then all of a sudden I get started getting gut rot from it. What's What's the most you've ever taken, Fuad? Hundred. Hundred Hundred's the most. I've okay. Taken. I knew guys. <laughs> I knew guys were taking like three 200. times a day. <laughs> hundred at a time. Listen, ninety percent of the time it was just fifty, but I yeah. did. I did try a hundred for a little bit. Yeah, I, I'd done hundred before when I was young, and then any other time I used it after that was fifty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was you a anadrol. It was a dangerous drug for me because the very first tear I ever got was on anadrol. I was stiff leg deadlifting four plates at twenty one, and it was two weeks out from my very first show, and I tore I tore my left hamstring. Yeah, the anadrol just made me feel like I could fucking lift anything. I was like, "This is incredible." Yeah, but it just—I'm think... not someone with a great appetite to begin with, and that shit like I just can't eat. So it was like, no, better to not take it and just eat more food. You know, I honestly, I honestly think the earlier anadrol was different. That's what I was about yeah. to ask you. Like once yeah. once the underground labs became more of a thing, the I, think the, I think the quality Anna changed. Poland. Yeah, yeah, Anna Anna that's what used to make it back in the day. I remember, I remember when I was like 19, I tried it or 20, it's whatever. Turkish. It was crazy, the strength gains. Insane. Yeah. And Listen, then I tried I, it again later in my life, and it wasn't the same. I can't, you know, someone said to me, oh, how do you know the drugs are different? I'm like, I don't. I can't say for sure. All I could say is there was a point where all of a sudden my body couldn't handle it. I couldn't eat. Yeah. It's strictly yeah. anecdotal. Yeah. yeah. And before that, I was like golden on it. Mm -hmm. So I can't say if it was better or different or whatever. All I know is it just for some reason, everybody all of a sudden started getting gut rot when they took anecdotal. Yep. Yep. Because that was never a thing before. Not that I knew. Back in the day, people took Anadrol and D-Ball. I never heard people say, oh, I can't eat. I, like, I, it was fine. Back when everything was pharmaceutical. Yeah. Uh, is Mike going to eat 30 muffins? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're backing no, up. No, Mike is not. <laughs> <You're backing up>. <laughs> <laughs> Are you backing out of the bet? Oh, Eat a few, see how I'm feeling. <laughs> like I said, I don't, I don't want to be in your house, fucking lighting up yeah. your fucking bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I'm there, I'm just in bed, like, uh, yeah. This is so worth it. The guys on the podcast, I love it. <laughs> uh, you finish your shower, start to dry off, and rip a loud, wet fart, like a long one, so loud and long, your wife hears it from the living room. Do you turn the water back on and rewash your crack or say fuck it and keep drying off? Oh, did you I immediately, you know, immediately yeah. did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going go back, to, I, oh I'm going back in, in the background. <laughs> I'm going back in the shower. I don't know what you oh, If you shit yourself, absolutely. But if there's substance to it, then I'm getting back in the shower. Yeah. Part, but You're no. there. 
No, but even yeah. if I if I shower and then I have to take a dump right after, because that happens to mm. me sometimes, oh, I will well, go I'll back. Get, I won't even wipe. I'll just rinse my ass out, you know? Like your bidet. A, human, yeah. a standing bidet. <laughs> well, why would, I wanna, why would I want to waste that? Like, look, our assholes only get so much, like, paper usage before they start to get fucked up. If I can save myself from one shit worth of wipes, I'm going to save it, you know? <laughs> the more shit you take... <laughs> The more shits you take concurrently and you're wiping, over time, your ass will be like, fuck, these are starting to hurt to wipe my ass. So if I can... <laughs> if no, just... your ass recuperates. No. <laughs> I was watching a video it's not, today. Wait but... a minute. No, wait. This is bullshit. It's not like you have, like... Okay, if you're born, it's not like you get a million wipes. Somebody get X amount, X amount of wipes <laughs> before he starts saying, to... But, your butthole how, falls off. Like, yeah. Close to each other, like concurrently. Close yeah, to well, other. if you don't give your ass time to recover. That's what yeah. I'm saying. If you're not yeah. getting enough recovery time, I'm gonna save one and just fucking hop in the shower. For and do you use, do you use wet wipes? Yeah, I do now. Yeah, you shouldn't that saves? Your... Yes, you should. We, we talked about this. We had the bacteria if they're you're scented. Not, you're not wrong. Right. All right, mate. You're not right. right. Wait, no, but I do a dry wipe at the end. So I'll do wet wipe, wet wipe, like wet wipe it, and then I'll do one dry. No, wipe. it's the I don't like the feeling of that wetness rubbing my no, butthole. Man. That's like wipe someone wipe licking that fucking. Wait blade. a minute. I do. <laughs> I do the dry wipe first, then the wet wipe. Why? Because I don't want to use the wet wipe to get all the junk out. I want to get the dry wipe to get, get the all the freshness junk out. from it, yeah. and then I want the wet wipe to clean. Just the for the rest. scent after. I just I'm just using the dry wipe to basically dry my asshole off. You know? No, that's the reverse. Nah. Have you guys ever had a had sat on the toilets with a bidet and then they have the dryer too? Yeah, a dryer too. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about Japanese this like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know they had a dryer too though. You Lee, guys, sent, um... Lee Priest sent me a video of his. He's got it at home. Is that one? Uh, I gotta see if I can find it. Can we talk? You guys shouldn't be using wet wipes on your ass, though. Why? Why? Because it, it, it kills your uh, good bacteria. No, it doesn't, Paul. It does. Well, we this, looked it up. I no, it leave this because this is what you use on babies, and all, this is when they're trying to like develop bacteria. And yeah, but that's it. their first few months of life. After a while, you shouldn't use them. Where did really? It I've seen an art. I read an article on. I swear to God, it messes up your ass bacteria. No, it does not. We looked I, it up, Fuad. Right. You and I looked it up together. <laughs> We're gonna do it right now. Yeah. Is it bad to use wet wipes? Yeah, on your butt. I was looking up shit today because I'm my shoulder surgery next week. Of like they tell you how to do stuff when you only have one arm. Yeah, and there's like a portable bidet you can get. Really? So oh, yeah, like a, I see. You can load it with water and you can like stick it in and shoot. Oh, like like <laughs> an oh, enema. Yeah, uh, you just look, like go from the back or from the front. Either one. Look, huh? Paul. look at who had. Yeah, this is live strong. It's bullshit. Yeah, it's Lance Armstrong. <laughs> you know what he's talking about. <laughs> Ask him about EPO. Don't ask him. Okay, okay. <laughs> from a hygiene from a hygiene per- wet wipes win. Yes. Okay, but how about for your bacteria? Look at this. Yeah, but what are you having bacterial issues? Like, what's the problem no, here, Paul? But I got I got great bacteria because I don't use wet wipes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep using wet My wipes butthole bacteria is the best bacteria. in the business. <laughs> it's 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 primo. It's prime. Yeah. <laughs> you can eat off my butthole easy <laughs> if you wanted to. <laughs> No, you can't because you don't use wet wipes. It's all about your crusty ass. <laughs> <Easy shit. laughs> it smells like spring breeze down there. Why using wet wipes for toilet paper is awful. No, oh boy. Do that. Well and good. Kill your skin microbiome. Uh, yeah. No. Antibacterial wet wipes may spread deadly bacteria. Let's find you can one. find anything you want on the internet. That's true. Yeah. Frame it the right way. That's true. Well, that's <laughs> why I'm trying to wipes, which is I'm different. Trying than... find, I'm trying to find one to help my argument. So, I think it's yeah. particularly the scented ones, though, that are bad for you. How bad is it going to be? I don't know. Not... I'm not going <laughs> to. I don't take a chance. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen, you take. Never wait heard. a second. Wait a second. You take fucking steroids for thirty years, and you're like the wet TRT wipe, food. Wet wipes where I draw the line. <laughs> My doctor oh, prescribes me TRT. TRT. Hello, <laughs> I have a job to go to tomorrow, guys. Bacterial or fungal infection. I appreciate that accusation. Have any anybody had had any actual infection or issues with the bacteria from using wet wipes? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no. Let's see pictures. Take no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, if you had to pick, would you rather have slept with a man and no one ever found out? But you two. Oh, but you two. Or never have slept with a man and everyone actually believes that you had slept with a man. 
Like oh, I'm thinking that one because We've I'm done. sure most people that watch this already think I have. <laughs> True enough, yeah. <laughs> he is living proof of it. Our, our <laughs> is that my reality, you are actually a man. I'm clearly thinking in my reality. <laughs> I mean, look, if we ran a poll in the comments here, I'm sure you have probably 60 plus to 75% of people that watch this podcast think I've probably done some sexual things with men. <laughs> uh, well, look, if you told me that you had... Uh, a gay sexual experience, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I'd shrug it off. I'd, I'd be like, I'm like yeah, that makes, that makes sense. <laughs> Your jaw wouldn't drop. It wouldn't change my friendship with you in any way. No, I'd no. be like, I'd be like yeah, have... that's that's normal. Yeah, yeah. it's Ian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, why is it that anyway? Fuad... What's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> why is it that Fuad showers so much and is so worried about being clean and smelling good, yet at the same time? Uses one towel a week. The kind of guy who uses a, reuses the same plate. He's all a complicated week. guy. He's a complicated <laughs> guy. <laughs> Everyone's got their quirks. Wait a minute. How does using the same plate affect my smell? Use the same plate? Yeah, man. If I eat like if I eat like ground beef and rice, and I'll throw just wash the bowl and then do it again. I don't even. Sometimes I don't even wash it. I just don't wash it. <laughs> sometimes you I don't just wash it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just put food Paul, right back in Paul it. Paul was appalled by that. I, I didn't know that about you. I, I thought I knew pretty much wow. everything. My wife, my my yeah. wife, gets, my wife gets so well because I have a favorite bowl, so I want to eat it stay out of the same bowl. I get it. I didn't know it. you had what kind of dog is that? I didn't know you had. What one is of those. that a poodle? Oh yeah, he's just like. What kind of poodle, dog? Yeah. What kind of dog is that? A cocker spaniel poodle mix. When uh, did you get that? It's a cockapoo. Yeah. yeah she, she's my oldest dog. She's my oldest one. Oh, I didn't How many know you that. got? Three? You guys what? got three, right? Jesus. Yeah. My, uh, I'm getting my daughter a dog soon. Yeah. Oh, dude. What's Mike, is your dog okay? He's like, she's she got, she gets, she sleeps for a long time. Her legs get sore. Oh, I'm back. It's so sad. I hate yeah. seeing that. She older? Yeah. I'm getting older. Yeah. Paul's, get, Paul's getting a dog. Yep, for my daughter soon. This is like, I can't see. So. Yeah, nice looking dog. Paul, are we doing meatballs and hummus tonight? Yeah, sure. For you it, guys yeah. want to join us for meatballs and hummus? Yeah, let's do a foursome. <laughs> hummus are worth it. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? I said it's not not meatballs and hummus. So if we're there, well, yeah. you guys are starting your own podcast called White Power. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but let's clarify: it's because we're white and we talk about powerlifting. Yes, because we're white and we're strong. <laughs> I get carried away here. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that's what I think that might be. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, if we're doing meatballs and hummus, we got to do geography. Uh, yeah. No, let's you just... guys do meatballs and hummus. I gotta like, take this dog out before she fucking pisses on my carpet. All right, we'll see you Friday, Mike. Yes, I'll be there. Okay, Mike. Have a see good night. Do. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay, right, bye. 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 All right. All right, which, which 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 area of the globe are we going to cover tonight? Oh, are we doing geography? Yeah, that, that's meatballs and hummus. We cover geography. Yeah. yeah, we have a little geography lesson with it. I'll fuck off. What's that? I said I'll do one geography question, then I'll fuck off. We usually <laughs> do a couple anyway. No, we don't. We did forty-five minutes of geography last week. It was that long. Yeah. Really? I. Eh? Yeah, it was a three-hour podcast because they left after like two hours and ten minutes, and then we carried yeah. on about this motherfucker thinks Adam Sandler dresses like shit. As an image thing, like on purpose. No, I think that's just he just dresses how he feels comfortable. This is Paul. Yeah. Paul is the most skeptical person on earth. He just, yeah. I would see that there is definitely some celebrities that like try and dress like extra bummy to like for like PR things, but I don't mm-hmm. think I don't no. no, he doesn't I, seem to be. I, guess, I definitely, but... I definitely think the I don't care attitude is like a real thing, yeah. like the image thing that people are trying to portray. Like, yeah. oh, I don't give a fuck. I just rolled out of bed. Yeah, but I, but I don't think that's Adam Sandler though. He's been like that for fucking forty years. He's dressed the same as when he was like not as famous as he is now, and he's just stayed the same. You know, my mouse is dead. I don't think we can do meatballs and hummus. No, you keep having these fucking mouse problems. Yeah, what's with your mouse, foot? Because it, doesn't it plug in? It keeps dying. Yeah, it keeps dying, and I only charge it long enough to be able to use it, and then I forget to like charge it when I'm not using. Doesn't it, it plug into your computer? No, it's wireless. Oh, you got to charge those. Well, if it's wire, if it's wire, 
I saw it. See, this is meatballs and hummus. <laughs> okay, one second, one second. Let me ask you something, Paul. Yeah, look at this. Look at this idiot. Oh, that's a cute dog. <laughs> that's the one you had in Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's cute as fuck. Yeah, he's cute. Yeah. Frenchies are oh, really cute. So, Paul, and this is the yeah. if if you have a wireless item, how do you think it works? Oh, look at him. <laughs> is that her or him? That's a him. The other ones are her. Oh, okay. uh, good looking guys. Three. I don't, I, I don't think I can handle three dogs. I don't think I can handle three dogs. It's literally no different than having one. Really? No, because it's like if you have to feed a dog, you just feed three. If you need to let one dog out, you let out three. It's like the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. I just don't know if I could get somebody to house sit three dogs. That is the only part that's maybe a little more difficult. Is like when you go to town or something, like you need yeah. to get some watch more dogs. Um, but I mean, it's not like that huge of a thing. Plus, I carry. I take, I take my dog everywhere I go. I think it'd be a bitch to take three dogs. Yeah, see, we don't take our dogs where like when we went to Toronto Pro, we just pick our favorites and we only bring B, just the one. <laughs> <laughs> she's just really like this one. The one that the first Frenchie I showed this one here. Yeah, she's just like the most well-behaved dog like we we walk her off leash like she doesn't need to be on a leash she like listens to every command you give she's like very good with people like she's like the best dog ever so we don't we can bring her she can stay in a hotel room all day and she'll just sleep in her bed you'll never have to worry about having an accident or anything like she's super easy hmm. yeah I'd, I'd feel horrible if i had a favorite and then just left all the others at home yeah i mean look i like them all the same but she's definitely the best dog you know best behaved Best behaved, yeah. Okay. Uh Paul. Where is Ecuador? Ecuador's in South America. Cent Central America. Okay. Wrong. Yep. South America? Both of you are wrong. <laughs> it's in Central America. No. No. Where wrong. is it then? It's South America. Okay, that's what I said the first time. No, it's <laughs> in Central America first. Yeah, I second guess myself. Where in South America is it? In the northern part. Well, do we have a map? Can we see? No, yeah. we can't see. It's a it's a game. That's the whole point. Well, you're well, picking no, random. You you're picking pretty. You got to pull up a map that's unlisted, and we'll point to the country. You're picking obscure countries too, Fuad. What do you want me to pick? I'll pick something more like you know, what mainstream, like oh, maybe Brazil or something. <laughs> Don't pick a South American country. That's not mainstream enough. <laughs> like pick Russia. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you want, what do you want me to pick? Okay, Australia. Uh, okay. Well, you're picking these countries that are you know. Well, what do you want very, to pick? Well, something a little bit more popular. Something okay, a little where, bit more common. Where is uh, Indonesia? No, where? No, is... not Indonesia. Brazil. <laughs> Why would I pick the country you already know where it is? <laughs> All you right. Can do, uh, you, can, you know where Indonesia is. Where is Chile? Okay, where's Chile? Chile is like really south in South America. Yeah. Well, it's not really south, but okay. No? No, it's south central. Yeah. Can we please what's go the, back? What's the most southern country in South America? Argentina? We... Argentina, yes. Yeah. Can we go back to Ecuador? Yes. Okay. Where in South America is Ecuador? Uh, it's in the middle. Ish. No. South. It's in the south. No. It's a little bit in the north. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> is it like northeast? It's west. It's west. Is it's it west? west? It's west. It's right here. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. Right underneath Columbia. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought. Quito right. is the capital. All right, Paul, let's see what you know about Ecuador. Okay. I don't know much about Ecuador. South America, I'm not real good with. Population. Uh, okay. I'm going to guess about uh, 20, 20 million. Ian's looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <clears throat> this is purely oh, 20 million. 17.8. Close. Hey, all right. That's pretty good. Yeah. Their currency, uh, though, you ask me next. Yeah, yes. I don't know what their currency is. I'd have to guess on that. I have no clue. Uh, what does Ecuador mean? What do you mean? What does it mean? Plenty. <laughs> you just made that up. <laughs> well, I don't know what Ecuador Land means. Of... Equator. <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> it means equator. It's... How did you know equator? Did he say it? No. I just figured it sounds like equator. Huh. Interesting. Um... What is the sweet dessert? Pardon? What is the, the dessert, dessert of Ecuador? Mexican fried ice cream. 
<laughs> churros. Call me churros. Churros. <laughs> Mexico is not South America, man. <laughs> yeah, they're very similar. You're like, oh, it's all the same. <laughs> chocolate. It's all hot. Chocolate. Chocolate, really? Cacao has been grown in South and Central America for centuries and has long been a staple of Ecuador's national and cultural heritage. Really? Yes, and also used for anti-inflammatory pro- uh, properties. Uh, dark chocolate. Uh, huh. Anyway. <laughs> so you couldn't stop me. No, I didn't stop you. Not to, not to <laughs> um, All right. Ian, you're coming tomorrow? Yep. So we get together tomorrow night with a little barbecue summon. Uh, yep. if it's if it's not raining for sure. Yeah. If it is raining, well, I don't know. Are you are you do you need food? Do you need me to order anything? No, I'll bring my I, my meal prep service. I'll bring with me. I, are you uh, sure? I told you got, the girls. You got everything you need. Yeah, they deliver Thursday morning, so I'll have fruit food for Thursday to Monday. So they'll give me plenty. Okay, and then what you're telling the girls what? Uh, the girls are excited to come over tomorrow night. I'm excited yeah, to meet you. Guys. Excited to meet you and uh, Melissa. I hope it's fucking. Uh... I hope it's nice out. I don't care if it's raining or I don't care if it's cloudy as long as it's not raining. Yeah. Well, your pool's probably set at 90, isn't it? The pool's 90 degrees. Yeah. So whatever. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go. Yep. Me too. Ian, talk to you tomorrow. Yep. See you tomorrow, Ian. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll call you in the morning. Okay, Paul. See you. All right.